Constitution Avenue in Northwest Washington, D.C. That is where today's Nationals World Series Championship Parade is about to get started. Does that have a sweet ring to it or what? Good, uh, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us in our Masson Studios. I'm Alex Parker. What a day we have on tap for you. We are thrilled to bring you live coverage of today's epic festivities and from every angle possible. With that, let's throw it down to Washington, D.C., where Bob Carpenter, F.P. Santangelo, and Bo Porter are standing by. Fellas, have fun. Take it away. Thanks a lot, Alex. I don't see how we can avoid having a great time here today. We got the coach out of the studio. He's with us. I got my partner, and uh, we're going to have a great day. Now, F.P., you have seen a championship parade before years ago in San Francisco. Tell our fans what we can expect throughout this process. I mean, anything goes. I mean, you, this is what you dream about as a baseball player. This is what you dream about as a fan. So a beautiful day. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better day. The parade route, just looking down here, is just a mass of red hue. Humanity. I see red people all over the place. We're excited about this. And hey, you dream about this as a player, and they get to experience this firsthand today. There's going to be some emotion with these guys. When they turn the corner and they come on the parade route, and they see all the fans for the yeah. first time, a lot of the guys are going to lose it. Yes, and this will be a different emotion that you have ever felt playing a baseball game. Again, when you talk about dreaming as a kid of winning the World Series and being the last team standing in the middle of the diamond, it's something that every player has dreamed about today it's going to become a reality for everybody that's going to get a chance to experience it all right Bo. at this level you have played you have coached you have managed what is your lasting impression of the 2019 world champion nationals i think there's it's the truest definition of what it means to be a team when you look at this their body of work and what it is they were able to overcome i think a hundred years from now when people think about let's go back and find the best team in major league baseball i think this team will stack up against any team from the past and any team in the future because of the magnitude in which they were able to accomplish everything in which they accomplished. You talk about five elimination five elimination games. You're talking about beating the Los Angeles Dodgers, who had 106 wins. The Houston Astros had 107 wins. Not to mention the odds that were placed on this team at May the, 30, May the 24th. And then even when they get into the World Series, many people still didn't believe they had a chance. So I think it's the, it's the greatest accomplishment as it relates to team sports. And I think they will be remembered as such. And I want to get back to F in a minute about the whole clubhouse thing because I know you're a big clubhouse guy. First of all, we need to check in with Alex. She's going to be out along the parade route today. Alex, can you hear us? <laughs> hey there, guys. It does not get any better than for this party. You can see we are on the rally stage right now. This is where the parade will end and the players, the team, the front office, everyone with the Nationals will be welcomed by a huge sea of red. They'll be bringing the trophies up here. A lot of special guests will be talking on the stage and not to mention, Neil, if you'll follow me, how about the backdrop? It doesn't get any better than that. The Capitol. But I'll send it back to you guys. Yeah, we are at the long uh, tip of Pennsylvania Avenue where this thing will wrap up the parade route. We'll go over that several times throughout the afternoon. There's a pace car, like a race. We'll keep track of the pace car and let you know where the guys are. And we definitely want to show you your nationals along the parade route. Now, let, Howie, be, let Howie and Eaton drive the pace car. They'll be here in two minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would they be like the shortest back. parade in baseball history. <laughs> yeah, a two-hour parade down to two minutes if we get those two guys a couple of sets of keys. FP, you're so big on clubhouse chemistry. Everybody in this game is. And you've been in the big league clubhouse for that six months, that seven and a half months, including spring training. From what you've been able to see of this group, where do they rank with the best clubhouses you've ever seen? I mean, the best. These guys truly love each other. They loved each other from day one. They turned that 19 and 31 around. And you hear it every year at a parade, right? When, when a team wins a championship, you talk about clubhouse chemistry. So when there's an algorithm and an analytic for everything, one thing you can't formulate is right. what those guys believe in each other. And we talk about where they came from, where they are, Carp. I mean, they taught us all a lesson, not just not just in sports, but like in life in general, not to give up, to believe in yourself. And when you do, and 25 guys are pulling on the rope the same way, and they all believe in each other, that you can win a championship. So yeah, the analytic part about baseball is great, but 
what they had in the clubhouse, you can't create. I don't care. Mike Rizzo had no idea when he put these 25 guys together that they would be this. And, and they're coming down the street, and they got a ring. Nobody picked them to win. And in my speech today, I'm going to say, every once in a while, I'll be okay if they put the ring on their middle finger. <laughs> they deserve it. They earned that right. That's a good plug there, FP. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, we will certainly look forward to that. <laughs> Let's have a look at our parade route. It's, uh, you know, fairly simple, the way things are going to shake out today. Now, we're, you know, to the to the left is the west end of the ball. To the right is the east end with the capital. So right at the circle, the pace car is right there right now, somewhere in the area of 14th and Constitution. They will come right down. There's one of our parade cams that will have the uh, procession coming down Constitution Avenue. They will proceed to the east. So there's 14th and Constitution right now. And it's going to be interesting because as the parade comes east on Constitution, it'll be passing some of the great museums, the National Archives, other amazing sites here in D.C. And, of course, the Capitol Mall off to the right side. Then you get down to about 7th and Constitution, roughly half the way from 14th to the Capitol. We have another parade camp there. Folks are lined up. I don't know how deep they are. I mean, we heard estimates of anywhere from 750,000 to possibly a million people here today. Now, Constitution eventually, in a diagonal merger, meets with Pennsylvania Avenue coming east from the White House. That's where a lot of folks are gathered, probably within about a two or three block of where we are area. They'll come down Pennsylvania, they'll make a couple of right turns, and they will make their way to the stage, which as you look at us, is right over our right shoulder. They say it's going to take two hours for all this to happen and for everybody to get up on that stage. You've seen these things. How can that take two hours? It's one mile. Well, the guys are going to jump off the, the buses probably, high five with the fans, interact. A lot of guys will probably walk down the street. I imagine Gerardo Parr and Max Scherzer are going to do just that. If you look that. over on the other side of the street, we got people hanging off buildings. I mean, it's just a glorious day. And a day, I mean, we all thought we might never see, and here we are. It's so surreal just to wrap your head around this whole thing, what's happened the last week or so, or the last month or so, and here we are. We're broadcasting from a world championship parade. And I, I got to give you a few <laughs> kudos, partner. Uh, it was about three, four, well, about four days ago before game six in Houston. You tweeted one plus zero one or one dash zero one dash zero equals parade so davy martinez philosophy of going one and oh every day this team did that well i mean it, when they when they were 19 and 31 they weren't just 19 and 31 it was a bad 19 and 31 they were making mistakes on the bases they were hitting batters late eddies they were throwing balls halfway up the backstop there was something silly that happened every single night and i think davy's mantra of one and oh today was about playing good baseball they knew if they cleaned up their act and played good baseball they'd start piling up the wins so if you look at the end of may and we got all these games left it's overwhelming so what do you do you simplify it one day at a time play good baseball the wins will take care of themselves and they did i don't know if we all believed it when davy first said it but these guys did that to perfection world series highlights right now we'll be back with more shortly here from pennsylvania avenue at the world championship victory parade in dc Tees off, and that was blasted. Big time pitch there for Strasburg. The Nationals take game one. 
And he just cleaned up. Wow. Kurt Suzuki gives the Nationals the lead. And this one is rocketed out to right. Uh, this journey for the Nationals is not over. They have forced a Game 7 of the 115th World Series. Game 7. Game 7. Somebody is going to be. Strike three as Scherzer blows it by him. That is a rocket to left, and the lead is cut in half. That's down the right field line into the corner. This ball is gone for a home run. Nationals on top. Swinging a line drive base hit toward the line. Eaton rounding third. Soto delivers again. That is up the middle. Nationals up by four. Here. Swing and a miss. Here it is. The Washington Nationals are world. pizza come in a square box constant contact makes it so easy to send emails you'll have time to let your mind wander try email and our new website builder free all right crew let's get started sure. Don't ignore the law. You must call 811 at least two to three days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Pain can weigh you down, but you're resilient. And I see how a lot of Cane Patch fuels your resilience. Powerful, targeted pain relief. Pain will not get the best of you. It will bring out the best in you. I see how a lot of Cane Patch. And going to the doctor is such a pain. Ugh, the old way of getting birth control. Have the exam and they gotta call the pharmacy and then the pharmacy's gotta call you. I first saw Nurex on Instagram and I thought there's no way this can be real. Nurex takes my insurance and my pills are free. You can do the pill, the ring, the patch, the shot. They Do they have the shot? Yeah. Really? Signing up for Nurex was amazingly easy. It came right to my door and the shipping was free. Oh yeah. It's pretty much the best. Blue Land is a revolutionary new way to clean that's proven to work. Our tablets cost only $2 and have superior cleaning power that cuts grease and grime. Shop now at blueland.com and get your kit today. largest coons.com to the new world champions congratulations nationals hater the set the kick here it comes swing it away Rendon to the right of the cutout at third. Here's the pitch. Swing and a fly ball center field. Robles going back. Still back there. He makes the catch. He makes the catch. He makes the catch. And a wild card game winning. Curly W is in the box. That defining moment of the Nationals postseason was brought to you by Coons. Now back to the parade. 
Alex, thank you so much. Highlights of the wild card game. So many times the Nats had made it into the postseason. So many times they were disappointed. It was going that way again until Juan Soto got that amazing hit. The Milwaukee defense had a little glitch. Nats scored the leading run and held on to win it as the bullpen kept doing what they would eventually turn out to do throughout the postseason. FP, that was really something because I know you're in the ballpark, I'm in the ballpark. We've seen all these disappointments since 2012. And finally, the Nats got over that first hurdle. I mean, it might have been the loudest I've ever heard Nats Park when Juan Soto got that hit. And, and with so many past postseasons, everyone was waiting around for something bad to happen thinking the worst and all of a sudden the Nats got their first break ever in a postseason game in an October baseball game when the ball Soto hit hops backwards if a lefty hooks a ball to right field it's supposed to keep going the way the hook is going that ball kicked back the other way got by him and, and everybody scored and it's the first break they ever ever got and all of a sudden in your head you're thinking maybe the ghosts are dead <laughs> maybe they buried all the ghosts and this is their time right when Juan Soto got that hit all the beers went in the air one of the coolest moments I've ever seen at Nats Park again every time you think about a championship run there's always a turning point in which it seemed like the, the pendulum seemed to swing your way I felt like that was that monumental moment where the pendulum swing swung our way and when you think about Juan Soto getting that big hit I know we were in the studio and we went absolutely nuts. Uh, we in saw the that online, folks. <laughs> we we that. went absolutely nuts in the studio. I think I was waving somebody home, you know, from the studio. But again, I think when you think about this team and them staying in the fight, I think that was the moment to me that actually let everybody know what the rest of the postseason was going to be like. Well, we have Mark Zuckerman here, our mass and colleague. We have Alex here. So, Alex, take it away with one of our baseball insiders. Let's go, Nats! Oh, thanks, guys. Mark, you have covered the Nationals for a long time. What is this like for you? It's pretty crazy. 15 years of covering this team, seeing where they came from the very beginning, some pretty low points along the way, a lot of October heartbreak for a bunch of years, and now to see what the last month was like, just one ridiculous win after another each time coming from behind. I kind of always knew in the back of my mind if they ever went on a run like this, it would be something like this. You'd see this kind of reaction. This town just desperately wanted this team to go on a big October run, do something big like this, and the response to it has just been amazing. As you reflect on this season, do you have a favorite moment or what stands out to you about this 2019 team? I think just the resilience that they showed, the way that, believe me, there are teams that could have given up at 19 and 31. They didn't do that. They played all the way through this thing. And I really felt like once they got through that wild card game, the way that, that Juan Soto hit, the double roar of the crowd, first on the base hit, then when the ball gets past Grisham and they realize that they've taken the lead, it felt like the weight was off their shoulders. They could do whatever they wanted. And it really felt like they could go on a long October run, and absolutely they did that. Mark, thank you so much. So many special memories. We're going to have some fun with the fans down here. They're ready to see their 2019 World Series champions. All right, thanks, Alex, and thanks, Mark. Mark Zuckerman has probably done more words on the keyboard about this ball club than anybody else over the last 15 years, and we're glad he's part of our mass and team. You saw some of the Nationals front office people, guys and ladies who work at the ballpark. This is a big day for the entire organization. And FP, you know, you've been around here for the last nine years now. Bo was here for a while. So glad to have you back. For those of us who get to know everybody in baseball, my family's been involved in baseball since the mid-60s. Nobody goes to work for a Major League Baseball team to get rich. They go to work for a Major League Baseball team because they love the game. They love being around the game. And this is an organization thing too, not just the players. No, it's for everybody involved. It's been through the bad times around here. Now they do experience a championship. But Carp, this is bigger than just 25, 30, or 40 guys that contributed to a world championship. I've been texting ex-Nationals players congratulations because they're a part of it. They got the Nats to where they are right now in a parade route winning a World Series championship. So Danny Espinosa, you name them all, Ian Desmond, Jason Worth, Sean Burnett, Tyler Clipper, Drew Storm, all the guys from the past that had all the heartbreaks in October. Over. This is for them, too. They got this organization right to the edge, and this group finally, as Davey said two years ago, got them over the hump. And, Bo, you coach for the Nats. How does 
this make you feel having actually worn the Nationals uniform? I tell you what, it's one of the proudest days in which I've had being in professional sports. And I've been in professional sports for 27 years. And when that last out was made, it was almost just joy just went through my whole body because I know how hard everyone has worked to accomplish what has been accomplished. And FP just said it about the former players and the former coaches. And everybody that's been a part of this organization, you know that when, you, when you're constantly just pushing that will, pushing that will, pushing that will, you know that eventually you're going to have a breakthrough. And 2019 was the breakthrough for the Washington Nationals. But when you look back at everybody that played a role in this, from, you know, the Learner family bringing baseball back to D.C., going through all of those rough stages, the 100 lost seasons, and basically finally getting to the point where we had a consistent team that could compete for a championship each and every year. It's just remarkable to see it all come together. This, this is surreal watching this, isn't it? I, mean, <laughs> yes, I can't it believe is. what I'm seeing right now. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, so we saw bus number two that had Juan Soto, Victor Robles, some of the batting practice guys, other uniform personnel on the field who work almost as hard as the players. The fight is finished for the Nats, and to, today it culminates in this fantastic parade. And, of course, the racing presidents have to be here. Right now we have signature moments for you from the National League Division Series. We'll show those, go to a break, and rejoin you from the Nats Victory Parade straight ahead, right here on Masson. Well, in Game 2 of the Division Series in L.A., the Nationals gave Steven Strasburg a 3-0 lead of the first two innings to work with. Uh, he has been a dominant postseason pitcher, and it was a must-win game. Pitch, swing, and a miss. Struck him out. The one, two, swing and a miss. He struck him out. And it was a dominating performance right in line with what he's done his entire career in postseason play. Little Sean Doolittle pitched the seventh. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him on a high fastball, and Smith is out on three pitches. But the Dodgers didn't think that Max Scherzer was next out of the bullpen. And they're going to go to Max Scherzer in the eighth inning. And he struck him out with a vicious slider. He struck out the side, 14 pitches, 11 strikes, and Daniel Hudson survived the tightrope walk in the bottom of the ninth inning and eventually struck out Corey Seager with the bases loaded to end the game. Kick the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out with a slider and a curly W's in the books. From one of the world's largest, Coons.com, to the new world champions, congratulations, Nationals. For a close shave, you need to get a razor and lather up. For a quick shave on the go, you need to settle for an electric. But what if you really want both? Nick Bolton here with the newest addition to our tactical line, the Bell & Howell Tax Shaver. Designed with the needs of our military in mind, Tax Shaver gives you a quick, razor-smooth shave, whether you're at home or on the go. It even has a built-in trimmer for sideburns and beards. And it works wet or dry for a great shave in even the harshest conditions. That's right, the Tax Shaver is completely waterproof. In fact, you could even use a Tax Shaver underwater and still get a great shave. Navy guys, Tax Shaver is small and compact, so it slips easily into any pocket. Yet it also has three powerful rotary heads that can easily take on even the coarsest hair. To prove it, I'm gonna do something I never do. Shave. As you can see, it easily handled even my stubborn stubble. Now that's what I call military tough. So let's review. Tax Shaver gives you a quick, razor-smooth shave, features a built-in trimmer, works wet or dry, even underwater, and has three powerful shaving heads. I mean, there's just nothing like it on the market today. Act now to get your Tax Shaver for this special TV price of just $29.99 with free shipping. It's the only shaver that features genuine Bell & Howell precision and quality and is backed by our 10-year warranty. That's right. Call or click today to get your Tax Shaver and we'll ship it to you free. Act now to get the Bell & Howell Tax Shaver at this special TV price. Here's how to order. 
To order, call 1-800-773-0616 or go to TaxShaver.com. That's 1-800-773-0616. Or you can order online at TaxShaver.com. Congrats to D.C.'s favorite baseball team from your local area Hyundai dealers. Ryan Zimmerman in regular season play is 0 for 4 with three strikeouts against Baez. And no doubt, Dave Roberts was looking at those numbers. But as Zim said of his numbers, you can throw all that out the window. In games like this, the right-hander kicks the lever. Zim swings and drives one of deep center. Defining moment of the Nationals postseason was brought to you by your local area Hyundai dealers. Now back to the parade. Yeah. Here we are, uh, Dan Polko atop one of the double decker buses here on the Nationals parade. They have me on a bus with the World Series MVP, Steven Strasburg, and the guy who recorded the last out of the World Series, Daniel Hudson. What's up, guys? Daniel, um, we haven't even gotten started yet. We're still, like, slowly creeping towards the, the beginning. You can see the people there in the distance. What are you What are you feeling right now? I know you're exhausted, first of all, but what are you feeling? What are you experiencing right now? Definitely exhausted, man. I'm just pumped to get going on this parade, man. I, I want to see all the people. I want to see all the red throughout the streets, man. I'm so pumped up for this. I was talking to you a minute ago, and I asked you whether you have even really processed the fact that you got the last out of the World Series. Uh, not quite yet. Uh, I, don't, I mean, I don't know when it's going to sink in. Man. Maybe after the parade today, it'll sink in a little bit. Once we're all done with all this stuff, and kind of unwind a little bit. But, man, I'm just, like, I'm just over the moon right now. This has been such an incredible year for you. You got you know, released by an organization in spring training. You got traded by a different organization at the trade deadline. You come here to D.C. You're from Virginia Beach. You're, you know, pretty much a local boy. Your wife gives birth to another beautiful baby girl, like, during the playoffs. How do you even encapsulate what this year has been like? I mean, you said it earlier, man. We're never going to forget this year, especially this last month, you know, having a baby and then doing what the team did, man. It's just been so, so crazy, such a royal month, man. We're so, we're so pumped up. Congratulations, man. I appreciate it. Let's go to Alex with Adam Eaton. Well, I heard Alex there for a moment. There he is. Alex, all yours. We are joined now by Adam Eaton. Adam, since you came back from Houston, how much have you all been looking forward to today? Very, very much through. That's she, oh, yeah, she, oh. Uh, very much so. Um, it was unbelievable support. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands, I mean, thousands of people that I saw today. Um, just in the short, uh, excuse me, short ride up this way. Um, great support. We've, uh, we feel it. I mean, we, you know, we had this conversation a bunch when I, when we came home, we felt the support. We were unfortunate that we didn't have any wins here at home, but um, to go on the road and be able to do it and then come back here and see the, the getting the love and the support that we've had all year is awesome. When you look back on this season, what will stand out for you? What will about this team and how special this group was? The guys, for sure. I think uh, that's across the board. I think if you ask any of us that question, it'd be the guys. Uh, we're kind of upset that, uh, you know, it's hard to bring back the same guys year after year, but. Uh, guys are most important people in the clubhouse they, they run the clubhouse and it's uh you know like i said it's a special year with a special group of people that uh be hard to duplicate adam thanks for your time enjoy this one with your boys today thank you say thank you, you. Say, thank you. <laughs> say go nets uh, there we go <laughs> thank you very much thank you. guys uh, <laughs> well that's awesome future nets reporter young mr eaton there uh, Adam Eaton kind of, in, in a lot of ways, typifies the fight that we've been talking about in this ball club. He's feisty. I still can't believe 
He got a sacrifice bunt and a home run in the game, same game, and he did it twice in the World Series. No player has ever done that. And he that. got hit by a pitch. <laughs> there you go. That's Adam Eaton. Uh, he's just so good on the biggest stage. I mean, he, all the clutch hits, the, the upper deck home runs, what he brought to this team from just working pitches. You know, every at bat all year seemed like it was 3-2 with them fouling stuff off. Just an old-school guy. Sacrifice button in the first inning. Whatever it takes to win, that guy will find a way to beat you. He's one of my favorite players I've ever watched. I, I felt like he did a great job hitting between Trey Turner and Anthony Rendon. When you think about a guy that's going to hit in that spot, you have to have a multitude of skills. And Adam Eaton fit that spot perfectly. He was able to move runners when he needed to. Yeah. He was able to sacrifice bunt to set the table for Rendon and for Soto. I felt like he did a great job even when Trey Turner was on base ahead of him, he would take pitches and give him a chance to steal bases. I felt like that triangle of threat kept a lot of pressure on the opposing teams. And what he was talking about, Carp, about guys going to different places, this is the last day that all these guys will be together as one. So while we're here celebrating, everybody's having a great time, these guys will never be the same 25 guys ever again. So it, it's a joyous occasion, but at the end of the day, it's also a sad yeah. one. They're going to be hugging each other and, and probably crying a little bit later on because they'll never be together again someone's going to go here a coach is going to go manage there a free agent here it'll never be that same group they had for six months in that clubhouse today's the last day they'll all be together i i will say it's a whole lot better than that happening in the clubhouse yeah after the loss that ends your season like it has been in years past and of course one time it happened on the road so your point's well taken and i think we constantly need to remind ourselves hey these guys as you always say, that's not a video game. These guys aren't robots. They're human beings with families, emotions, friendships. And it's it's one of these things, and that's why it makes World Series championships so special. How do you replicate this any more in your professional career? We hope that there's a chance it'll happen for most of them, but it is a, a kind of a poignant day in that regard. Yes, I don't think you can duplicate the roster, but I think you can understand you now have the formula. You know what you're looking for. As you start to construct the next year's team, you now have an idea of exactly what you're looking for. And when you think about this moment, that's why it's so important to embrace moments like this. Because like FP said, some of these guys are going to be free agents. They know that this full complement of players are not going to return as a whole. They're going to go different places. But when you look at this team, one of the things that stood out to me a while ago was the fact that none of these guys, except for Strickland, had ever won a championship. And I think that was a, a yeah. key point for this team because it allowed them to stay hungry because they never had gotten that chip. So now, as you sit here today and they have that chip, I think as they move forward, whether it's here or someplace else, no one will ever be able to take away from them that they are a champion. Well, it's a formula. Patrick Corbin coming in relief in game four of a four-game series during the regular season. And Max Scherzer coming out of the bullpen, too. I just think Davey Martinez is not getting enough credit for the way he managed this whole thing. You have to be fearless. You have to manage every game like it's the last one you'll ever play. You have to manage every game like it was game seven of the World Series. He did that. The moves he made, bringing in starters as relievers, and shaking up the lineup in the middle. You know, we've had managers here in the past, or managers period in the past, say, we're just going to manage the playoffs like it's another game. It's not. When you have a five-game series and a seven-game series, you have to throw all convention out of the box. You have to manage like you'll never play another day again. And Davey Martinez did just that. I think I'm seeing Sean Doolittle with his lightsaber coming down the street. <laughs> so Sean and his bunch coming down as well. The fight is finished. You know, uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break. We want you to know we're only 30 minutes into what we think is going to be two and a half to three hours of parade coverage. There's a whole program coming up later around 4 o'clock or so from the stage right behind us. FP and I will be up there with Charlie and Dave and uh, some of the other Nats folks to say a few words. So we've got a lot more straight ahead. Stay here on Masson. It's the greatest parade for baseball in the history of D.C. Congrats to D.C.'s favorite baseball team from your local area Hyundai dealers. It's a familiar story. Allergies ruining your sleep and next day too. Taking Zizol at night relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed. Plus, it works faster than Claritin and on first dose provides the same relief as Zyrtec at nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. When we first opened our doors, it didn't take us long to realize. We weren't in the car business. At Lexus, we were in the people business. We needed to be helpful. 
respectful, and compassionate. To treat people like guests. It's what we all signed up for. And now when people need this most, we will do what we've always done. Take care of people first. The rest will follow. At Domino's, we pride ourselves on handcrafted pizza. But after leaving our 450-degree ovens, the only hands that touch them are yours. Mix and match any two or more for just $5.99 each and get them with contactless delivery from Domino's. We've been bad boys. Don't you know family is all that matters? Look at the baby. Stop it right now. Seriously. The boys are back. We ride this thing till the wheels fall off. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Bad boy, that's what's up. Bring their A game. Oh, we're not just black. We're cops too. We'll pull ourselves over later. <laughs> bad boys for life. Be the first to buy now and watch anytime, anywhere on your favorite screens with Direct TV Cinema. Movies start at channel 125. Hey, remember this guy? Here's a hint. Sometimes he's your firstborn's name plus your favorite fruit, or your birth year and your cat's name. He's your login. Remember him and access what's yours in the AT&T Thanks app. Sweet! Get special AT&T offers, like buy one get one movie tickets, pass the popcorn, plus sporting events and concerts. Access what's yours and let the benefits begin with the AT&T Thanks app. BigTimeBads.com would like to congratulate the World Series champion, Washington Nationals. To get your first time World Series champion bats, log on to BigTimeBads.com now. Kershaw's one order red on, swung out, hit of the year to deep left center field. Taylor going back, warning track at the wall, he leaps, it is gone, goodbye! And this is now a one-run game here at the top of the eighth inning. So now the batter is Juan Soto. Here's the pitch. He swings and belts one a deep right center field. Way back. Going, going, and gone. Goodbye. Halfway up the pavilion. A tremendous game. Tying home run by Juan Soto. The Nationals have been back-to-back -back home runs off Kershaw. It's the Nationals three in the dunk. Kelly's one strike pitch. Swinging a fly ball, center field deep. Bellinger going back to the warning track, to the wall. It's a grand slam. Howie Kendrick has done it. They're going crazy in the Nationals' dugout. Howie Kendrick with a grand slam here in the 10th inning of game five. The Nationals seven, the Dodgers three. Do you believe it? That defining moment of the Nationals' postseason was brought to you by Big Time Bats. Now back to the parade. Yeah, from a dance to a parade. All kinds of folks coming down Constitution Avenue and then a slight left onto Pennsylvania as they finish the parade route down behind us. Here, Bob Carpenter, F.P. Santangelo, Bo Porter, out on the course, if you will. Dan Coco, Alex Chapel. We've had a visit from Mark Zuckerman, some of the Nats players already. Bo, you and I were chatting a few moments ago about some of the things Mike Rizzo did to put this team together. Not only the ball club that left West Palm, but the additions made since. The amazing addition of Para, the really business-like addition of Estrubo Cabrera, and guys that would eventually give the Nats a whole bunch of depth off that bench to lead them to where they are right now. Again, I've said this. And to, Daniel Hudson, too. Yes, I've said this to Mike Rizzo probably 10 times um, this season. I think this was his finest work when you think about him being able to restructure this roster. When you look early in the season and this team was playing bad, what, not only was it bad baseball, they also have, was hit with, with a rash of injuries. The bullpen was in shambles. And Mike Rizzo, strategically, him, his front office, the scouts, they did a great Great job of identifying the players that not only fit their roster but also fit the payroll and where this team was at financially. I felt like he did a great job of plucking players from other teams and getting them into the Washington Nationals fold that not only fit on the field but they also fit in the clubhouse. So when you look at all the analytics that would come with signing a player or acquiring a player, I think Mike Rizzo did a great job of getting the right people right kind of character on this ball club as well. I, I talked to Brian Dozier right after the Nationals clinched on the field. Brian said a lot of ball clubs have really good players, but character is what takes you over the top. 
Well, and you talk about Mike Rizzo and what he did May 24th. I mean, he went in the clubhouse basically in the coach's room and he said, look, something's got to change. You know, we're, we're 19 and 31. It, it, either we're not going down like this. You're going to get fired. You're going to get fired. You're going to get fired. I'm going to get fired. We're not going down like this. So all of a sudden, you know, they started coming out early. They were taking BP for day games. They were doing all kinds of early work. And, and they changed. I mean, the reason they turned it around wasn't just magic. They just like, like a leaf in the wind. These guys bared down. They started coming out early every single day and working hard to a man, whether it's relievers, yeah. whether it was infielders, whether it was pitchers hitting. Every single day it was like spring training from May 24th on. That's why they turned everything around. Well, I hope it's coming across at home because it's certainly coming across to us how loud and boisterous and fun and crazy. Hunter Strickland and his family getting off the bus. There's Joe Dillon, our assistant hitting coach. Texas guy. You know, FB and Poe knows this. Big city. <laughs> Baseball puts in more time than assistant coaches on a major league team. No, I mean they're they're on the grind each and every day. Again, when you look at the uh, the product that happened on game day when the guys take the field, those coaches are at the ballpark at 11 o'clock in the morning. They're looking at video. They're basically putting together a game plan from the information they're receiving from the analytical department, and then using their baseball experience to give that information to the players, which allows them to simplify their thought process and allows their skills to play. Is that Patrick Corbin? There he is. Yes. And Jen alongside, a couple of kids from upstate New York, having an unbelievable first year. Looks like Alex might have a chance for Patrick here. Alex, if you can hear me, take it away with our left-hander. Patrick, your first season in D.C., what are your thoughts? This is unbelievable. I mean, this many people showing up for this, uh, it's pretty special. You mentioned it's pretty special. What's special about this ball club that you'll take away from this 2019 team? Um, just just how close we are as a family. Um, it's still crazy to think we're world champions. So um, we're, I, think, I think guys here, seeing all the fans come out today, it's, uh, it's really exciting. We're happy for everybody here, and I uh, just can't wait to keep, keep having fun. When you guys were in Houston, how much were you looking forward to celebrating with all your fans here in D.C.? Oh, I mean, this is unbelievable. I mean, this The turnout here, I heard there's going to be like a million people, so I have no idea, but that's unbelievable. I heard you were on Matt Adams' shoulders. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, uh, I didn't know he could hold me up there. I was, uh, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. That was a good time. Oh, have a great time. Enjoy it. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys. Hey, I think Matt Adams could put all three of us on his shoulder. Well, maybe not Bo. He could put FB and I on each shoulder and carry us around. Patrick Corbin, great acquisition because Bo, it, you can talk about all that numbers, analytic stuff you want. It still starts with starting pitching and how deep your guys can pitch into games and how effective they can be. Yes, again, and Mike Rizzo, the strength of this team was with the starting pitcher, but I'm going to go to Patrick Corbin, and his unselfishness is why we're here today. When you think about Patrick Corbin signing the big contract that he signed to come here, obviously to be a starter, when Davey Martinez asked Patrick Corbin to do some things that he hadn't done throughout the course of this season and throughout the course of his career, he did it without question and again that speaks to the attitude one for all all for one that these guys have had the entire season when you think about a championship team what you're gonna find at the core root of it is a group of guys that are willing to step outside of their comfort space and do what was best for the team and Patrick Corbin exemplified that throughout the course of this postseason uh, sneaky MVP of game seven coming out of the bullpen and dealing you know Max just yeah. kind of winged it Ham and egged it, if you will. You know, reputation on the mound and character more than anything at that point. And then Patrick Corbin came in and just dealt out of the bullpen, to your point. Whatever they asked him to do, he did it. And I want to speak to David Martinez because you heard after the game in his post-game interview, the idea was for him to go one in it. Bo, we will do that when we come back from break. We are at the biggest party on the face of the planet Earth right now on this Saturday, November 2nd, in Washington, D.C. More on Masson. Well, wait a minute. Now we're told we're going to keep it right here. So, Bo, 
Let's go ahead with some of your thoughts on Davey. Well, just thinking about Davey Martinez and his decision-making, again, I felt like he did an outstanding job of managing the game that was in front of him. The idea when he brought Patrick Corbin in that game was to, for him to just go one inning through that pocket of two lefties and see what happened after that. But when he saw the swings that the Astros was taking and saw how command, how Corbin was in complete command of that game, he came back in and asked him, do you want to go one more? He said, I'm good. He came back in after the second inning. You want to go one more? Great job with Davey just managing the game. I think I heard in my ear just now that we have Kurt Suzuki. Alex, take it away. We do. We have Kurt Suzuki. All right, Kurt, you told us back in spring training when you came back to the Washington Nationals, you had a goal. There was something you wanted to accomplish to finish the like this. This is exactly what you guys wanted. How do you put it into words? Uh, it's This is unbelievable. You know, I, I'm at a loss for words right now. All these people here supporting us, uh, come out to celebrate with us. Uh, it's great. And, um, you know, the last time I was here, it was obviously ended in heartbreak in 12, and 13 wasn't very good. But, uh, you know, the second go around, I was saying, this is this is it right here. I come back for, for a second try, and we made it all the way. Oh, Kurt, enjoy this today. And who's with you right now? My son, Kainoa, and Malia, my daughter, Malia. They're here celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> Have so much fun. Right. Thank you very much. See you. BigTimeBats.com would like to congratulate the World Series champion Washington Nationals. To get your first time World Series champion bats, log on to BigTimeBats.com now. SUVs were engineered with only one mission in mind, to be the best. In the category, in the industry, in the world. During the spring event, get 0% APR financing up to 36 months on most models and 90-day first payment deferral on any model. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. If your shirt isn't tucked into your pants, are your pants tucked into your shirt? When you're getting big-time results from your constant contact emails, it's okay to let your mind wander. Try email and our new website builder, free. All right, crew, let's get started. Sure. Don't ignore the law. You must call 811 at least two to three days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Join your Washington Nationals home and away. To help with at home learning, the dancers sharing free online activities for kids. Visit nationals.com slash community for short activities and baseball themed tutorials focused on reading, STEM, and physical activity. So we start with up and away, and we go one, two, three. Step up to the plate, keep your head in the game, touch all the bases, and have some fun. From one of the world's largest, Coons.com, to the new world champions, congratulations, Nationals. moment of the Nationals postseason was brought to you by Coons. Now back to the parade. The parade 
it is still going on. A busted on has turned on the Constitution to start the parade round. There's behind I would say 20 deep. On the other side, they're about 10 deep. This is empty. Well, as you might expect, in a gathering of this side, size and uh, every TV station within 100 miles of here next to us, audio can be a bit of an issue. We were having a hard time hearing uh, Dan there. So. I think he got run over by the bus. It's not official, but I think not, he did. It's not the first time we've thrown Dan under yeah, the bus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Max. Hey, balls, Max. And now we dance forever. You know, Anibal Sanchez, before Gerardo Parra showed up, Anibal was one of the guys who got some personal, fun, friendly things going on this ball club. The Nats had a night off in Miami before a series with the Marlins. He invited everybody to his place. He invited the clubhouse staff, the broadcasters. He wanted and wanted everybody to come over. FP, that was one of the first signs we saw that this club off the field was kind of coming together. And here's one of the brand new guys getting that done. And, and we didn't know how to handle it as broadcasters. We didn't go because we felt like we're infringing on the players. And he was upset that we didn't show up at his party. And that just shows you what this guy brought to the ball club in the clubhouse. Obviously, a tremendous pitcher. Got about five different change-ups, the butterfly change, the, the, the outing against the Cardinals in St. Louis where he almost had a no-hitter. But the presence Anibal had in the clubhouse of just, like, loosening these guys up. They were so tight. Gerardo Parra, the same way. Trey Turner has turned into the leader of this ball club. I mean, he, he's a guy that's not afraid to tell people maybe what they don't want to hear, but that's what a shortstop does. <laughs> I mean, he's a leader, and Trey Turner, out of nowhere, has turned into the leader of the Washington Nationals. Unbelievable season. Did you see his fingers after the game the other day? His right finger's still crooked. His middle finger's crooked. He can't straighten him out. So he played with eight fingers all season long. So you're thinking, okay, well, he can hit like that, but how about going in the hole is short, and yeah. your finger's like this and trying to throw the ball across the infield. What he did this year, the, the pain tolerance, the leadership ability, and yeah. just when he got on base and he scored a run, the Nats were 50 and 21 this year when Trey Skirt Turner scored a run, and they were 8 0 in the postseason when he scored. And to, to mind what you said about his, his hand, he had one of the lowest error totals of any shortstop in the major leagues this year. How did he do that, Bo? I tell you what, when you think about when, when this team lost Trey Turner, um, it went straight downhill because it, when you lose that captain in the middle of the diamond, it doesn't matter who you replace him with, you're going you're gonna to take a fall. And this, I felt like the start of this run came when Trey Turner came back. Not just what he bought offensively and on the base path, but I felt like solidifying that shortstop position and on the, in the middle of the diamond, he actually helped improve the overall defense. But speaking to his leadership, I think again, a lot of guys basically got comfortable in their skin as this season started to go more and more, and they became more vocal about some of the things that they probably would have not said a year ago or two years ago, they now realize that they had the right group where everybody can actually voice their opinion and it will be received. The one thing what happens when if you say something to someone and it's not received the proper way, you almost get into a reserved place where you go, I don't know if it's okay for me to say this to that guy. I think it was all hands on deck and no one actually was offended whenever someone brought something to their attention that was going to be for the betterment of the ball club. Accountability. It's a word we started hearing a lot when Jason Worth came here in 2011. And FP, you mentioned him earlier in the show, and I just happened to run into him purely by chance right in front of the pitcher's mound after the Nats swept the Cardinals. And I said to him, don't think you didn't have anything to do with what we're celebrating right now. It's worthy to mention. Is that is that the uh, godfather there? That is. With the cigar and the trophy? Mike Rizzo. <laughs> hey, that is not a light trophy. So we're talking about all these character guys. One of them, of course, one of the best was Howie Kendrick, and Alex is with Howie right now.
Thanks, guys, Howie. What a season for your team. How do you put this into words, celebrating here during the parade? You know, it's, uh, it's been phenomenal, you know. You, words can't describe, you know. You play your whole career. Some guys, you know, Hall of Fame guys, legends of the game, never won a World Series. And, you know, to have this opportunity to be able to be here, experience this with my family and, you know, with the fans to bring a title to D.C., I mean, it's truly special. I mean, what better place than, than the Capitol to, to do something like this? And, you know, coming down Constitution has been, it's been phenomenal. The, the outpouring of the fans, the love from the fans, I mean, it's unbelievable. What's been the best part of the parade so far? Uh, you know what? Being able to experience with my kids, you know, seeing how much the fans really appreciate and how much they love the team and uh, just being able to bring the first title to D.C. And as you look back on this 2019 team, what will stand out to you about this ball club? Uh, just the ride. The guys, you know, this team, everybody's special. You know, being able to be in the locker room every day with these guys and be able to do something what, like what we did this year, coming from being 19 and 31 to winning the World Series, I mean, you can't dream it. No, you can't. Congratulations. Enjoy this. Thank you so much for your time. Good to see you. What a man. What a family. You know, one of the reasons the Nats didn't make the playoffs in 2018, Howie Kendrick tears the Achilles early in the year. FP, that was a gaping hole that could never be filled last year. I, I've never seen a guy put the barrel on the baseball as consistently as Howie Kendrick. Just gives you at bat after at bat. The home run against the Dodgers, the grand slam at Dodger Stadium, McClinchy NLDS, was unbelievable. His reaction, the dugout reaction. And then the other night in Game 7, he's got a Game 7 World Series winning home run under his belt he's 36 years old you could never take that away from him the hit the other night the biggest he's got the two biggest home runs in that's history this October love the guy uh, he's a cosmic professional he works hard and he's been fun to watch all year well when you talk about leadership in the clubhouse again Howie Kendrick is a guy who he's been around he's seen a lot he knows a lot and when you talk to a lot of these guys when you think about the coaches the coaches are one thing but I tell you what Player to player, these guys talk hitting, and Howie Kendrick is one of the smartest hitters in all of baseball. So not only was he missing on the field and his ability to actually hit and play defense and do the things that he's able to do on the diamond, but that aspect of having that veteran guy in the in the dugout doing games or even at the games when you just sit around and talk about your at bats. I think he's helped these young guys tremendously because of his level of experience. Yeah, no doubt about it. If you're a young kid on the Nats, so a young hitter, you want to hang out with Howie Kendrick as much as you can. And FB, I hear about this all the time. Young guys simply watching veteran guys. When they say how he handles himself, how he goes about his business, what exactly does it mean when we hear those things? I mean, he's just a professional on and off the field. Like Bo said, he helps players out. He's a good teammate. I, you know, when it's all said and done, nobody remembers your career batting average, not your stats. The first thing he asked, was he good, a good teammate? That's your legacy in baseball, and there's nobody that's ever going to say Howie Kendrick wasn't a good teammate. Did you see that bus? That was the A-list bus. That had Rizzo, Davey Martinez, and Ryan Zimmerman on it. That was a big boy bus with the trophy. <laughs> and I think Dan's still under one of them. They're just dragging him along the parade route now. He'll be okay, though. A few scrapes. Hey, and Bo, by the way, uh, before we go any further, and we got to go to break here in a second, kudos to you and Dan. Fantastic job in the studio. Nats extra pre and post game. Your first year together. Well done, sir. Thank you so much, Bob. I appreciate it. It was it was a joy. Dan Coco made it easy. He um, he's a constant professional. I felt like we worked really well together. But when you're when you get an opportunity to cover a world champion, they make it easy for you. I thought you kept him grounded very well. Back with more from D.C. The biggest party in the world in our nation's capital right now on Massive. From one of the world's largest, Coons.com, to the new world champions, congratulations, Nationals. At Domino's, we pride ourselves on handcrafted pizza. But after leaving our 450-degree ovens, the only hands that touch them are yours. Mix and match any two or more for just $5.99 each and get them with contactless delivery from Domino's. And Doug... We customize your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need.
only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. Yes, the first word to any adventure. But when allergies and congestion strike, take Allegra D, a non-drowsy antihistamine plus a powerful decongestant. So you can always say yes to putting your true colors on display. Say yes to Allegra D. I'm Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank. When Blue Land asked me to clean a toilet on TV, I said, are you joking? But here I am because Blue Land is serious about saving you money. Forget buying endless plastic cleaning bottles. With Blue Land, you only reuse one. Easily clean anything around your house. Your vault, portraits of your ancestors, and a $2 a tablet, you save money for life. Get your kit now at blueland.com. Going to the doctor is such a pain. Ugh, the old way of getting birth control. Have the exam and they gotta call the pharmacy and then the pharmacy's gotta call you. I first saw Nurex on Instagram and I thought there's no way this can be real. Nurex takes my insurance and my pills are free. You can do the pill, the ring, the patch, the shot. They Do they have the shot? Yeah. Really? Signing up for Nurex was amazingly easy. It came right to my door and the shipping was free. Oh yeah. It's pretty much the best to D.C.'s favorite baseball team from your local area Hyundai dealers. Hudson has the sign now from Gomes coming set. Looks like they want to go in. Here's the kick now. The pitch, fastball, is hit in the air to left center field. Robles calling for it. He's under and waiting, and he makes the catch. He makes the catch. Bang! Soon go the fireworks. A National League. Nationals postseason was brought to you by your local area Hyundai dealers. Now back to the parade. A great series of big events for the Nats, winning the wild card game, vanquishing the favored Dodgers in the division series, and then sweeping the St. Louis Cardinals, taking that whole thing from 2012, ripping it to shreds, throwing it out the window, never to be haunting us again, and then on to the World Series. But, Bo, down through the history of baseball, one of the biggest things has always been to win the pennant of your league. That's a big deal. Whether you win the World Series or not, is that's what the pennant means. It's the championship of the National League. Well, I tell you what, when they were able to speak the Cardinals, when you look at, obviously, the demons that haunted this organization from 2012, and to get over that hurdle, again, many people may have thought that the Washington Nationals was going to be satisfied with just getting to the World Series. That was never their goal. Their goal was to be the last team celebrated in the middle of the diamond, and that's why you saw the fortitude that this team displayed throughout the course of this postseason. It, because to me, this is a goal that they set long ago. They were humbled in the, in the middle of May. And once they got back off the mat and they got into the fight, I said they were the most dangerous team because they never wanted to have that feeling again. And today, we sit here and we salute them and we celebrate them. But I mean, from the end of the May, they were 40-something games over 500. So everyone was saying they were the underdog, the underdog. They took down a 106-win team and a 107-win team. But they were playing the best baseball of anybody in the big league. So when they got to the NLDS against the Dodgers, I picked them in four. They won in five. You know, when they got to the Cardinals, it, it was evident that they were a much better team than the St. Louis Cardinals. Nobody picked them against the Houston Astros, a 107-win team. But if you look at their record since May 24th, oh, my goodness. Max, be careful. Did Max Scherzer win the WWE Championship this you week? Think or, so. And we don't know anything I'm about just, it. I'm worried about him. He's the one Matt guy Max. I'm worried about. He's, he's soaking it all in. He, when Ovi was in the fountains and the Caps won it, Max saw that. And I always said, if the Nats ever win a World Series, he's the guy that's going to do stuff like that. Here he is on the top of a bus, a moving bus in the World Series parade. Unbelievable. Max, please. Please, Max, get down right now. <laughs> he's, hey, he's got a long time to heal. He'll be all right. I tell you what, it's days like today that make your whole body feel good. You don't have any ailments today. Oh, he's feeling good. Trust yes, me. Yes, he's feeling real he's good. He's feeling more than good right now. So are all those guys. It's just such. 
such a wonderful thing to see this. I, I don't know how many people are here. I'm sure we're seeing one-tenth of the crowd from our vantage point here at the end of Pennsylvania Avenue. Love to see an aerial shot, uh, maybe in the newspaper tomorrow or online, of everybody along the parade route and the National Ball of Constitution. I can't hear Bob for some reason. And we have our Sheriff Sharks in the crowd. leaving the air we want you to know this we're not leaving the air when the parade is over there's a whole program complete with speakers on the stage at the end of pennsylvania avenue right behind us that'll commence when the parade is over now we were told the parade was going to take two hours it looks to me like they're running a little ahead of schedule yeah. because i think most of the team if not all of them are close, if not at the end of the parade route. So that'll happen in due time, but we will not leave you here on Masson until that part of the program has been taken. I'm not sure. I think that bus ran over one of those speakers you're talking about. that shot if that's a live shot and I think it is it looks like that bus with uh, Mike Rizzo is right in front of the National Archives so they probably got another four or five blocks to cover to get down to this area here we are we're in the shade I had to put on the jacket sun's behind uh, the other museum over here and uh, things got a little chilly down that's here. a sweet 2005 starter jacket Bob you see the original, <laughs> the original jacket there. <laughs> Did you see all the crowd? Look at the elf building in here. All the way down, unbelievable man, where we're sitting at the end of the parade route. This, it's hard to describe. We're glad you're here with us on Masson. For those of you who couldn't have been here, you're missing quite a party, but uh, we hope that you're enjoying it at home like you. Hey, you were home probably watching on your couch when the Nats beat the Dodgers. You had to watch them clinch the World Series out of D.C. So uh, glad you're with us wherever you are on this very special day in the history of our ball club. The culmination uh, of a lot of years. And we understand folks are watching all over the country right now on MLB Network as well. Bob Carpenter, my broadcast partner, F.P. Santangelo, former big leaguer, former big league coach, player, manager, Bo Porter. As we celebrate, there's some of the Nats analytic guys. I see, I see Mike and Sam there. Those are guys who work a lot. They work very hard to help our guys be at their very best on those analytical things you can control before you go out there between the they lines. They know exactly how fast that bus is going right now. They know the launch angle of the bus and the exit velocity <laughs> and the spin rate of every single tire. That's you know, how good they are. This just crossed my mind since uh, part of the national audience is with us as well. I think a lot of people, Bo, found out things about this Washington Nationals Club, maybe the organization as well, that we've known for a long time. This was a special group. This was a special organization. And maybe it takes something like this to finally get the word around all the baseball and around all the country. Just what an outstanding group of young men this is. Yes, this is a great group. I mean, you talk top to bottom organizations, I think is one of the best organizations in all of baseball. Again, when you talk about marrying the two, marrying analytics and marrying old school baseball scouting, Mike Rizzo and the Washington Nationals, they, they have done it about as good as anyone because I think they respect and they value both aspects of it. We all, we all know that there are so many things that you can quantify through analytics. But when you think about the Washington Nationals and the things that you cannot quantify, Quantify. When you talk about makeup, you talk about character, you talk about fortitude. Those are the things you talk about culture and how important culture is to your team going out and loving, coming to the park together and playing together. I think those are the things that will stand out to people about this 2019 team. Yes, is it talented players? Absolutely they're talented. Were we able to use the analytics to help these guys play fast and produce on the field? 
But at the end of the day, I think it comes down to guys wanting to be together, play together, and these guys played like a family. Well, and at the same time, you hear stories around baseball of other ball clubs firing scouts. They don't need some scouts anymore. And that's not the Nationals way. As you say, they married the two together. And I'll tell you, when I saw Mike on the field in Houston, after the ball game the other night, he and Davey embrace it. I mean, those guys, those were two grown men crying their eyes out because Mike knows how hard it is to have the eyeball test on players, to scout them, to get them signed, to develop them, get them to the major leagues. He mentioned this dad, Phil, FB, who's been a scout forever. That's a huge part of what this organization's about. It is, and it maybe changed the way people think about baseball. I think Alex is with Michael A. Taylor. I'm hearing John Harvey, our producer, in my ear. Does she have Michael A.? I might have broke my finger on a beer that was coming in. I tried to, like, protect my fiancé from getting it in the head. One of the camera guys got hit in the eye with the beer, but uh, it's still a lot of fun. Michael A., what was it like being part of this parade and celebrating with all your teammates, with all your Nats fans today? It was awesome. I mean, the turnout today was unbelievable. It was uh, a special moment for sure. Enjoy this. Thank you. Thank you, guys. How about Michael A. Taylor? He, he, for the rest of his life, he's one for one with a home run in the World Series. <laughs> I mean, you can't take the, we, we were joking that the A stands for postseason in Michael A. Taylor because he's had some tremendous hits for the Nats. The Grand Slam against the Cubs. He comes off the bench and hits a tater. I mean, World Series, bat a thousand with a home run. And it's interesting because when I talked to Michael A. early in the uh, playoffs, and there's our MVP, Steven Strasburg. Guys, whoever had a better postseason than what he just did? I tell Nobody. you, it was absolutely outstanding. Again, I think when you think about Steven Strasburg, it's just the maturation of him, not only as a man, but also as a pitcher. I think it goes to show just how important development is. And even when a player arrives at the major league level, there's still a maturation that needs to take place. And Steven Strasburg is a perfect example of that. He arrived at the big leagues. He was throwing 99. If it was ever in doubt, he would rear back and just throw the ball as hard as he could. Now, when you look at Steven Strasburg here, in 2019, this guy is absolutely pitching. I mean, you're talking about everything coming out of the same tunnel. He has the confidence to throw all three of his pitches in any counts. He's absolutely fearless, and I think it was his ability to actually horn his emotions and his temperament that actually helped get the Washington Nationals to this championship. FP, interesting pattern to what he did during this offseason. Like the Nats, twice he fell behind early 2-0, shut the door on the Houston Astros after that and gave his teammates time to come back and win ball game. I mean, just, you remember, I don't know, three, four years ago when an error would bother him or a bad call. For me to see him in game seven or game six to step off the mound and slow the game down, the ability that he had to be in the moment, I've never seen him like that before. Earlier we talked about the fun and the camaraderie that Anibal Sanchez brought to this ball club. Right now, Alex has him. What was this like celebrating with your team? How much were you all looking forward to the parade? Oh my God, the parade, unbelievable. It's a moment that, I, you know, like I always waiting for, a uh, moment that I like, dream in, moments that I, that I saw in TV for many, many years, and now I'm here. It's, it's something that I'm so blessed, and you know, it's, I don't have any kind of word to, you know, grateful with God to this opportunity. You bring up that you were waiting many years. One of the things we saw on the field was when you embraced Max Scherzer, and you said, we did it. After the heartbreak with Detroit, now to do this in D.C., what was that like for you guys? You know what? Uh, everything started on the on the first uh, game of the, of, the, of the World Series that uh, we won. Like, nobody waiting for, for that, especially because we got, like, a week off. And uh, we said it one thing, like, hey, man, we just want to be on the team that we won all. And uh, when that moment happened, that's why we're like, remember, we did it. We did it. We won all. So we celebrate. And, uh, that's, you know, it's so emotional at that moment. And I mean, and it was crazy for both, both of us. And how about your belt? The belt I'm at the last to carry is because we won the World Series. <laughs> That's why I wear the, the, the bill right now. <laughs> well, enjoy this today. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. Thank you. Well, you see how Davey Martinez has been interacting with the fans along the parade route here. 
Is there any guy in D.C. because of the way he handled the adversity and now the success that's any more loved than number four right there? No, especially so. after he snapped the other night on the World Series. <laughs> that was a good snap, That's the a way. legendary status what he's got right now. He's high five of those people going, you want to be fired? 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 I got a ring. So awesome. There's Mike off the uh, <laughs> off the bus and bringing the trophy. They already broke the trophy, I heard. Three flags came off, and Tiffany had to replace the three flags. They've been drinking out of the trophy, which I don't even know how you drink out of that trophy. They were trying to funnel it the other night in the clubhouse. They saw what the Capitals did, so they're trying to copy everything and go one step above the Caps. You're not supposed to drink out of the World Series trophy, but these guys are so nuts, they're trying to find a way to do it. They already broke it once, and they're probably going to break it again. cool is this? Well, the mayor of Washington, D.C., Muriel Bowser, is here. What a day for her. What a day for her administration. And she's with Alex. Thank you. Bob was just saying, what a day this has been for you. How do you put this into words, celebrating the World Series with Washington? Well, it's incredible. We have a great team in the Washington Nationals. They won four games on the road to win the World Series, and we couldn't be prouder of them. What do you think of all the fans that came out today, just the atmosphere? Well, we wanted to put on an amazing parade for them. The men and women of our police department and fire department are keeping everybody safe, and thousands of people are lining Constitution. Avenue, the vision of seeing Washington National fans atop the, the archives and all the monuments is just truly special. It can only happen in Washington. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Well, it's amazing. Congrats to D.C.'s favorite baseball team from your local area Hyundai dealers. This right here is the new Papadilla, which, if I'm not mistaken, is Latin for better than a sandwich. <laughs> Even has a better pickle. Get a new Papadilla for six bucks. Better ingredients, better pizza, better than a sandwich. Papa John's. It's starting to happen every day. People are surprising themselves. The moment they realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Don't use if allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor right away about signs of inflamed blood vessels, such as rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and before stopping any asthma medicines, including oral steroids. Do more with less asthma. Talk to your doctor about Dupixent. It's not pretty good or nothing. It's not acceptable or nothing. And it's definitely not close enough or nothing. Mercedes-Benz SUVs were engineered with only one mission in mind, to be the best. In the category, in the industry, in the world. During the spring event, get 0% APR financing up to 36 months on most models and 90-day first payment deferral on any model. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Now, 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 this ain't no sandwich, because on a sandwich, they ask you if you want cheese. But on a papadilla, cheese is what's holding the whole operation together. Get one now for just six bucks. Better ingredients, better pizza, better than a sandwich. Papa John's. Live fearless with the name trusted for over 80 years. Care first, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Two nothing. They're good with Astros they're leading top of the okay. second. Here's the wide of the pitch. Swing and a drive hit well. Deep Let's center field. Way back goes Springer to the warning track. <laughs> Looking up and it is gone. Goodbye. Ryan Zimmerman with his second home run of the postseason cuts the Astros lead in half. Swing a fly ball, well hit to left field. Way back goes this one. It's got a chance. It's going, going, and long gone up onto the railroad tracks. Welcome to the World Series, Juan Soto.
Nationals tie the game at two as Juan Soto goes opposite field for a tape measure home run onto the railroad tracks. That defining moment of the Nationals postseason was brought to you by Care First, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Now back to the parade. Who hits a ball left-handed onto the railroad tracks in Houston? You worked in that ballpark, Bo. No, who does that other than Juan Soto from that side of the plate? Unbelievable. I tell you what, the stat cast said, the stat cast said 413. Yeah. I live 19 miles from the ballpark. I think that ball landed in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Albert Pujols hit one there in 05 against the Astros to delay their World Series by one game. But that's a right-hander turning on a hanging slider. This is a 21-year-old kid going the opposite way in the World Series. That Pete, you and I saw this right from when he came to the big leagues last year it took him about two seconds to hit his first big league homer and then we started seeing doubles and homers going the other way wide open stance two strike approach he never lost any power doing that well his life has changed man when he goes back to the dominican republic he's gonna have to have security around him i mean his life is has changed immensely he's a rock star back there already but now he's a world series champion on the biggest stage and what he did when he goes back home it's gonna be a whole different story so i mean what a wonderful experience for him yeah. and he was not phased at all by any of it I mean they, he might as well have been 41 the way he acted in the World Series and the way he reacted to some big situations we can talk about the bombs he hit to me the most impressive thing he did in the World Series but it was two to one and Anthony Rendon hit the home run it was two to nothing Rendon hit the home run in game seven he took a walk behind him to set the stage for Howie Kendrick if I'm 21 years old and I got the pop that Juan Soto has and I've already went back to back home runs with Anthony Rendon in Los Los Angeles. I'm thinking we're going back to back again. He took the walk. He passed the baton to Howie Kendrick, who got the biggest hit in Nationals history. That was impressive. Again, when you think about Juan Soto and him being 20 years old, turning 21 as the postseason went on, the moment never got too big for him. He was able to actually, you know, take his energy level and rise to the occasion, but the moment itself never got too big for him. He never got outside of being the player that we all know that he was capable of being. Like FP just said, there was no hero in him, and let me expand my zone. He stayed within the confines of what it is he did best. He was able to use the whole field. He was hitting the ball the other way. When they did come in, he made them pay, hitting the ball off a t I mean, upper tank. Juan Soto again matured right before our very eyes during this postseason. As long as I'm in baseball, I will never forget the video of those kids down in the Dominican at the Nats Academy last year watching Juan Soto's first big league home run FP. The video got sent to us. It went on the air. It was unbelievable. It repeated itself this year with some of his big postseason stuff. But to see those kids jumping around for a guy who had probably been with them the previous year, one of the most unbelievable things I've ever seen. Well, he means so much to a lot of people, especially in his homeland. But I mean, when he hit the home run after Bregman hit the home run and he handed his bat to Tim Bogart and said, you're not doing that to us. Afterwards, he said he thought it was cool. I guarantee you no one wants Soto like I do. He was sitting out left field going, I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to carry my bat to first base too. And yeah, again, I, you're talking about a generational generational impact that Juan Soto was going to have on the Dominican Republic. When you see those kids celebrate and they see a guy that was actually in the same place that they're that, that they're in right now, that's going to motivate those kids to work even harder. So Juan Soto has had a tremendous impact, not just here in the States, but back in his Dominican hometown. Time to take a break here from the biggest party in the world on this day, November 2nd, the Nats World Series champions. And the party continues here on Constitution Avenue onto Pennsylvania Avenue, right in front of our nation's capital on Mass. Live fearless with the name trusted for over 80 years. Care First, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Yes, it's the first word of any new discovery. But when allergies attack, the excitement fades. Allegra helps you say yes with the fastest non-drowsy allergy relief and turn any half-hearted yes into an all-in yes. Allegra, live your life, not your allergies. Hi, I'm Lolly, a Domino's franchisee. As you can see, we're open and working hard to safely keep putting food on people's tables. And we could use your help doing that. If getting some full or part-time work during these tough times could help you, Domino's is hiring. Head to jobs.domino's.com and apply today. 
Because we're not only committed to putting food on people's tables, we're committed to helping you put food on your table. Remember this guy? Here's a hint. Sometimes he's your firstborn's name plus your favorite fruit or your birth year and your cat's name. He's your login. Remember him and access what's yours in the AT&T Thanks app. Sweet. Get special AT&T offers like buy one get one movie tickets, pass the popcorn, plus sporting events and concerts. Access what's yours and let the benefits begin with the AT&T Thanks app. It's just a quarter, right? But what if Acorns automatically invested that quarter? Every time you bought coffee for a month, what about a year? 10 years? And what about the change from food, movies, parking, gas? What about the change from everything you buy? And what if Acorns invested it all into a diversified portfolio, giving your investments a chance to grow? What if you didn't have to change your life to change your life? Then it's not just a quarter, is it? From one of the world's largest, Coons.com, to the new world champions, congratulations, Nationals. And now Verlander winds and delivers. Eaton swings and it's one to deep right. Down the line. Going. Going. Gone. Goodbye. A game-tying solo home run for Adam Eaton. On an 0-1 pitch from Justin Verlander with one out of the top of the fifth inning for Adam his second home run of the postseason. They both come here in the World Series with Kendrick on deck, two out, nobody on. Here's straight up as he takes signs. Now into his wide. Here's the pitch. Soto swings and hits one high and deep to right. This is way back. Going, going, and gone. Goodbye. Into the second deck. A tremendous home run for Juan Soto. It's the Nationals in front for the first time tonight. It's Washington 3 and Houston 2. Now, that defining moment of the Nationals postseason was brought to you by Coons. Now back to the parade. Bob Carpenter, F.P. Santangelo, Bo Porter back with you. Dan Coco roaming the grounds. Alex with interviews with our Nats. And uh, Davey and his crew. They, well, he's a man of the people now. He, he made a visit. Back on the bus, business to take care of at the end of the parade route. And, of course, Mike Rizzo still has the World Championship trophy intact, at least for now. You know, I, you see things coming to this event today. I saw some of the handheld signs, and now we dance. Hats off to you for that one. The other one I saw all over the place, one word, clutch. Bo, when we look at those World Series highlights, the Nats had some of the best clutch hitting I've ever seen from series to series to World Series in postseason play. I tell you what, all you got to do is look at the last three innings. But that, that, didn't just, that didn't just start in the playoffs. This team, they did it all year long. When you look at the number of comebacks and the number of runs in which they scored, they led Major League Baseball in runs from the seventh inning on. And it, it, it goes to that grinders mentality. When you have a bunch of grinders and they're going to grind out that bat after that bat after that bat, eventually it wears down a pitching staff. And I think it's that mentality that helped these guys re realize that they're never out of a ball game. So when you think about teams that basically live off the home run, this was a complete baseball team. They can get you with the long ball. They can pass the baton. They can steal bases. They ran the bases. They can they can grind out at bats. They can walk. They were able to win games in a multitude of ways, and I think that's why they're able to come back late in ball games because they were not a one-dimensional baseball team. That says a lot in today's game because there's a lot of that one-dimensional stuff going on. Nobody wants to give up and out for a bunt anymore, and we saw how that led to some pretty big innings for the Nats. I just think they control the strike zone better than any team in baseball. They stuck to their game plan. They wouldn't get out of the game plan. They wouldn't deviate from I thought the Dodgers were real good at that, too, but... You know, just the way, you know, they sat on a pitch, and, and if it wasn't that pitch, they took it. And, and, and it, nobody tried to be a hero. If it wasn't, you know, if you're not going to pitch to me, the next guy's going to pick you up. That's how you win. That's how you get into the playoffs. That's how you win in October. FP 
Pete made a great point, Bo, about the Soto walk, passing the baton. As a former manager, how big is it for teammates to trust each other as you go through that batting order? Because a lot of times, especially when you get into moments like the World Series and postseason baseball, you have guys wanting to be the hero instead of being a part of history. And what you witnessed with this ball club is that they were more interested in being a part of history. I'll go to Adam Eaton, a situation where it called for a sacrifice bunt, he sacrificed Bunny. The team needed a long ball, he hits a home run. The team needed a stolen base, he stole the base. So when you look at every aspect of the game, these guys were willing to do whatever needed to be done at that moment, and that's why they're world champions. All right, time for a break in our coverage of the Nationals World Series Parade. We are stationed just in front of the Capitol here at the end of Pennsylvania Avenue, our beautiful Capitol building in the background. More from D.C. in a moment, right here on your home for the Nets, Messin. From one of the world's largest, Coons.com, to the new world champions, congratulations, Nationals. As a caricature artist, I appreciate what makes each person unique. That's why I like Liberty Mutual. They get that no two people are alike. And customize your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. Almost done. What do you think? I don't see it. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. When we first opened our doors, it didn't take us long to realize. We weren't in the car business. At Lexus, we were in the people business. We needed to be helpful. Respectful. And compassionate. To treat people like guests. It's what we all signed up for. And now when people need this most, we will do what we've always done. Take care of people first. The rest will follow. don't wake up every day trying to conquer the world. They don't set their sights too high or aim to set the world on fire. True champions just want to put in the work. They want to bleed, sweat, and cry if they have to. So long as they do anything and everything possible to complete the task at hand. Champions don't wake up every day motivated to conquer the world. They conquer the world because they wake up motivated to go 1-0 every day. Congrats to D.C.'s favorite baseball team from your local area Hyundai dealers. No balls and a strike. Outside target, Torino's the pitch. Swing a line drive, slice down the right field line. Springer back, looking up, and this one is gone. It hits the foul pole, and the Nationals lead. Howie Kendrick has done it again. A slicing two-run homer off the right field foul pole. Do you believe it, Howie Kendrick? Part two. The Nationals are a strike away from franchise history and some World Series history. As Hudson tries to close it out, it'll be another 3-2 pitch to Michael Brantley. Hudson sets the kick, and here it comes. Swing and a miss! Swing and a miss! Swing and a miss! And a World Series Game 7 winning Curly W is in the books. The celebration is on. The Washington Nationals are the world.
defining moment of the Nationals postseason was brought to you by your local area Hyundai dealers. Now back to the parade. This is absolute insanity. As someone who was on a parade bus, Alex, I saw people as far as I could look when we came around a couple turns. You've been here posted up watching all the buses come in. I mean, we knew that D.C. was a sports town and a baseball town, but this proved it here today. It, it's incredible. We heard Patrick Corbin talking with us. He said there's close to a million people. You were thinking maybe a million people here. Everywhere you look, it's red. They tore down the sign back here so they could see they're on top of buildings. They're all the way out, but there's nothing like it. You can just feel the energy, the excitement. It's awesome. I was on a bus with Steven Strasburg, the MVP of the World Series. People were chanting MVP the entire time that we were moving. He hated every second of the chance. He wants no attention always. But it was really cool for me, Alex, seeing Daniel Hudson was on my bus as well, the guy who got the last out of the World Series with his dad, with his wife. And seeing, he's from Virginia Beach, he's a local area boy. And seeing him and his dad arm in arm enjoying shutting the Capitol down for a day. And, I mean, it's it's been amazing the, the turnout that the Nationals fans have brought today. And I can't wait to hear what speeches and what's going to happen up on the stage. But this has really been a sight to see. No, very, very special. Dan, it's my first year covering the team. And I don't know, is this the norm now? Is yeah, this, this happens this every year. Best? No big deal. <laughs> no, but just you can tell how much it means to everyone. Um, like you said, the story you told about Hudson, it's just so great. Sanchez talking about that when him and Scherzer are on the field, they yeah. shared that moment. They said, we finally did it. I mean, it's it's a special moment. There's so much emotion that goes into all of this for all of these guys. This is what they play for. This is what they invest all the time and effort into. And it, a, a lot of them don't really see the payoff until they're they're in a moment like this. And they, they get to feel the love from the entire D.C. sports community. And... It's, it's just special to see it, you know, as someone myself who's been here since 2012, you know, we've seen this, this fan base evolve, and it gets to a point now where you know, there's close to a million people here, whatever the number ends up being. Brian Dozier is just in the best shape of his life. <laughs> Yo, Doge, Doge. Scale, scale of one to a million. How are you feeling right now? A million and one, baby! <laughs> I don't know what just happened there. <laughs> that just shows how close this team is. That guy's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we'll send it back to you. It's chaos here. We can't wait for the the stage and all of the um, rally festivities there. There's so many people here. We're having such a great time, and we'll send it back to you. Hey, nobody knows how to party better on this team than Brian Dozier. <laughs> I'm just glad he's got his shirt on right now <laughs> because we're freezing in the shade out here at the moment. If they ever wrote a book on what went on in the clubhouse after every win, <laughs> unbelievable the parties these guys had. Legendary stuff, not for TV. And by the way, as we look at you, right behind the camera, as we get to the end of the parade, the World Series trophy has arrived. Mike Rizzo, David Martinez, their bus, all the fun going along with that. So, uh... Like I said before, I think we're a little ahead of time. We'll see about 25 minutes away from the uh, scheduled start of the program up on the stage. But this is a bunch of guys who know how to have a lot of fun. And I think the Nats fans picked up on that quite a while ago. And now, I mean, I, I hear from, I don't live here all year around like you do. And Bo, you live out in Texas. I live out in Oklahoma. Have peace here all year. But now going to other parts of the country, I'm hearing things about the Washington Nationals, and we have made fans all over the country now like never before. What's it like even though you're close to the Houston area there? I tell you what, I think everybody loves an underdog. I think when you look at the Washington yeah. Nationals story, I think it speaks to leadership. When you look at David Martinez, how he was able to lead this ball club back from adversity, I think it speaks to how important culture is, whether you're talking about culture in the Major League Baseball clubhouse or you're talking about culture in your business practice, whatever that 
that business may be, when you look at the obstacles in which this team was able to overcome, I think it's a life lesson that parents want to give to their kids. When you think about developing your kids, you want to be able to point to examples like this. That's why I've always said that sports is an institution of higher learning. When you look at this 2019 season, I think there's just so many life lessons that many people around the country will actually pull from and use in every aspect of life. And FP, we, we observed a year and a half ago the love this city sent out to the Capitals when they won the Stanley Cup. The bond between the hockey team and our baseball team kind of got solidified. Our guys were pulling for them as hard as you could possibly can. Davey was wearing Caps jerseys to his afternoon press conference. Now the Capitals get to return the favor. And suddenly, after many, many years of frustration in two different sports, and by the way, hats off to the Mystics. They won the WNBA championship a couple of weeks ago. This is now a city hosting of multiple championships. And don't you love to see the dynamic between these athletes from different teams? It's really cool, man. I mean, it's a district of champions now when you talk about all the winners and like I said earlier in the show you know all the thinking about the worst can happen and waiting for the worst to happen I mean the ghosts are buried man all that stuff's done it's over the, the, the best just happened and you're Washington Nationals are World Series champs I mean the, the city's going nuts because Clark, baby, I've lived here for nine years now when you walk around town a DC sports fan they're jaded man they've been through so many losses they've been through so many heartbreaking losses no matter what sport it is they just got to the point where like oh here comes an error oh here comes you know a, another tough loss and now they've experienced this and they've got to feel this so we talked about in 12 how tough that was but all the pain of all the losses in the playoffs makes today that much more special. And, and what other team in baseball has that backdrop with the capital? <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me with this? It couldn't have been a better place. And by the way, if you're wondering logistically how this many people can see what's going on and will be able to view the thing from the stage, there are gigantic TV screens at certain intervals all the way back on Pennsylvania Avenue, all the way out on Constitution Avenue. So some of the folks that can't get close to the stage now that the parade is wrapping up, they'll be able to stay right where they are. They'll be able to hear everything. They'll be able to see everything. And they'll be able to enjoy this because you got to make a whole lot of special provisions when you're talking about three quarters of a million to a million fans gathered in one place. Activity starting on the main stage per the original schedule and we will have all of it for you here. That is supposed to start in about 20 minutes from now. So it looks like the parade is pretty well wrapped up. Nobody going away. They want to hear from their team. They want to hear from their GM, their manager, their owner. Unfortunately, they're probably going to have to hear from a couple of the broadcasters. And uh, we've been given a time limit on those. We'll see how we do on that. But it's just a wonderful thing. And uh, the trophy is making its way toward the uh, stage. And let's go, Nats. And now we dance, clutch, champions, you name it, it's on a sign all over our nation's capital right now at the National Capitol Mall area. All right, how does this compare with what they saw in San Francisco years ago? I can't tell you. I mean, we were just sitting here on stage, so I wasn't on the parade route, but just from what we can see here, it looks just amazing. You know, there's other teams that have had World Series in their town before and lost. So when you talk about it, it was 108 years for the Cubs or what with the Red Sox, the Nats have never had a World Series. And the last one was 1933, so it's not like they've been to them and lost. So just getting to the World Series for the city was incredible. To pull it off, the first World Series since 1924, and you can just see the emotion from all the fans. It's just so great being a part of this community now for nine years and what these fans have gone through in every single sport to see him just let loose today is beyond words. Oh yeah, a thought just occurred to me. Another wild card team won a World Series. Doesn't happen all the time, but Bowitz happened before and these guys had a long road to get there. 
how important was possibly the confidence from the 8-0 and homestand at the very end of the regular season. The Nats had to play a five-game set against the Phillies because of a rainout. They won all five of those. They eliminated a very good Cleveland team after they sent the Phillies packing. As a former coach and skipper, how important was that momentum going into the wild card? Well, I think it's always important. When you talk about the postseason, it's how well you're playing when you get into the postseason. And I thought it was very critical for the Nationals to actually have to play those playoff type games down the stretch. You look at it in years past when I was a coach here in 2012 we had the division wrapped up. We kind of coasted into the playoffs and then we had to flip the switch once the playoffs started. These guys never had the opportunity to turn that switch off and I think when you got, once they got into the playoffs and they won that wild card game, that's what made them so dangerous because they were now playing teams that coasted into the postseason and was waiting to flip that switch and the Nationals never gave them an opportunity to turn the light back on. And then at P, the long layoff after sweeping the Cardinals for the pennant before playing a World Series game, the guys did not let that bother them winning those first two games in Houston. Now everybody thought that would be a, a, a big deal. I'm not the director, but can we go back to the shirtless shot of Brian Bozer real quick? <laughs> he, he has taken his shirt, his shirt off. Shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to go on stage without his shirt. Unbelievable. That guy meant a lot to the ball club, even though he didn't play a lot in October. What he meant to him in the clubhouse as a veteran. I think he's the Nationals best import from Mississippi since Tyler Moore and Demetri Young. We've had three real characters come out of, come out of there. I think I'm not sure about Demetri. I know Tyler Moore was Mississippi, but the, we're gonna hear from all the guys. We're gonna hear from Mark Lerner. Stoner in baseball right now, probably in any professional sport. And uh, there's the stage all set up, facing back to the northwest, directly up Pennsylvania Avenue, back toward the White House. The Capitol will be the background for this, and we'll be getting underway with that in just a few moments. We think about 15 minutes away from that right now. You've worked for the Lerner family, Bo in this uniform. Can you put into words their approach to this and how this culminates for them after 14 some years of owing this team? I'll tell you what, we'll get to that in a minute. Right now, dance with Mike Rizzo. Gando. Thank you, Bob. Mike, how do you describe what you just saw? Mike, Emotional, just outstanding. Uh, the people in the district and uh, the DMV, it's just unbelievable support to this team. We couldn't be happier to bring this thing home to this to this part of the country. And they earned it, man. The, the fan base of this, uh, this town, they stuck with us through bad and good. And uh, I couldn't be happier to bring that trophy home and, and show it in front of all these people. You've been dreaming about this for a long time. Yeah. How does what you experienced today to this point match up with what you imagine. It's, it's the best feeling I've ever had in professional sports and uh, it's just it's just amazing and you know we, we we talk about a lot of things in chemistry and, and this and performance and this and that but that that player group in there is as good a people as it gets and uh, and the DC people should be proud that that's their team and their name is on them. When you're in a moment like this, who do you think about? You know, my dad comes to mind. You know, he's uh, my mentor, and, uh, you know, he's at home watching the, this craziness and, uh, and smiling. Mike, congratulations Thanks. on everything. Enjoy the hell out of this. Thanks a lot. I will. Hey, Mike, real quick. Yeah. There's a lot of fans on All right. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Mike. So we're going to go to our, what a, maybe our final break before the program gets underway. We'll have some final thoughts for you when we get back. But right now we're pointing toward 4 p.m. Eastern time here on the Mid-Atlantic Sports Network. Bo Porter, F.B. Santangelo, Bob Carpenter, Dan, Alex out there. It's been fantastic. Final break, and then we have a whole lot more for you as we wrap up the Nationals World Series Parade and get to this big stage in just a few minutes. Congrats to DC's favorite baseball team from your local area Hyundai dealers. Doing the things we love can be painful. 
Asper Cream's triple effect provides targeted relief, works in minutes, lasts for hours. Love hurts. Asper Cream works. Hi, it's Jan from Toyota. As part of your community, we're here to help you during these challenging times. As we all work toward enhanced efforts for cleaning and social distancing, most Toyota dealers remain open for both your sales and service needs while being focused on the safety of our customers and associates. We encourage appointments when possible, and some dealers even have pickup and delivery service available. We're here for you now and in all the better days ahead. Toyota. Why does round pizza come in a square box? Constant Contact makes it so easy to send emails. You'll have time to let your mind wander. Try email and our new website builder free. Down six runs. Looks like the Padres are trying to hit homers today. It ain't over. Game winner! Badly needed for this ball club. Who says for seven innings? Wang going to miss on some high heat. Right three after a delay. It ain't over. Trey Turner has another walk-off hit. Ten runs allowed. Two nothing Miami. Four to one Marlins. And he's going to jack one heading for the bullpen. It ain't over. Soto, deep left center. And there goes another one. Give up the lead in the eighth. This is a 4-3 game. And this ball heading for the seats. Game is tied. It ain't over. The Nets sweep the series and walk off the Sox. Down to your last out. Swing and a miss on the changeup. Drag three call. It ain't over. Kurt Suzuki, see you later. The Nets have won it. A Saints baseball man once said, it ain't over till it's over. It ain't. The Nationals win. The Washington Nationals. Every play on message. See you opening day. Washington Nationals World Series Parade. The parade part of it has come to an end. Everybody gathering up on the stage here. We're going to be with you for about nine more minutes before we get it to the stage. And you'll hear from everybody who's going to share with our audience and this massive crowd in D.C. all their emotions and feelings about this 2019 World Series championship. For those who weren't with us almost two hours ago when we got this thing going, first of all, Bo and then FP, how does a ball club start out like the Nats did with all the injuries and all the things that went wrong with the bullpen? They were 19-31 and 31 through 50 games. They had 112 games left. They had to win 71 of those games to reach 90, which usually means postseason. They won 74 of those games to get to 93. How did they do it? I think in the day and age when every, every every team is going young, I think one thing that Mike Rizzo did a great job of is putting the right veterans in this clubhouse. Because at 19 and 31, one, if you have selfish people in your clubhouse, which you did not see from this 2019 team, there was no finger pointing. There was no anonymous quotes. They basically took what was happening, a man to a man, they came together, they bonded together, and they decided to fight together. And I think that, that goes a long way. And I think the veteran leadership in this clubhouse is what allowed this team to actually continue to move forward. If you have a young team at 19 and 31, it will be very difficult for them to overcome that type of start because they just hadn't played enough baseball. But when you look at the veterans, the Howie Kendricks, the Ryan Zimmermans, the Max Scherzers, all of those guys, because they played a lot of baseball, I think they were able to weather the storm. And once they got healthy again, when you talk about being humbled, this team was humbled and once they got off the mat, it was lights out. FP, inside the clubhouse, what were the elements that went in to all this happening and Davies let's go 1-0 and today and that's exactly what they did. That's Davey Martinez. He never panicked. He was the same guy every single day. I mean they were 19 and 31 and he walked into the clubhouse and said today's the day. He was so positive the whole time. I'm a positive guy and I'd look at him sometimes and go like is that real? Are you can you be that positive? So I mean I just go right to the skipper because I've played for guys. If you see a guy panic as a player, you're going to panic. If you see a guy uptight about your start and he's flipping a spread, I'm going to be uptight. And there's no way to turn 19 and 31 around. So being the same guy every single day and not panicking, staying positive, when maybe all of us around him weren't, I mean, I, I can't say I saw this coming. I mean, I'd be lying at 19 and 31 if I said they're going to have a parade. <laughs> this team, He did. He stayed with it every day. And then to Bo's point, talking about leadership, 
Anthony Rendon, to me, is the quiet leader of this team. 10 for 10, 0 for 10. He's the same guy every day. Yeah. Bo and I played with guys. If you're 5 for your last 10, you're chirping, you're bouncing around the clubhouse, you're the happiest guy in the world. You're 0 for your last 10, you don't say a word. It's hard to say hi to him. You know, so... For Anthony Rendon to be, in my mind, the MVP of the National League and to be the same guy every day in the clubhouse, that's a commodity that you don't find very often in the major league level. Oh, and by the way, pardon the walkthroughs. We have every TV station in the region here, and we've had a few intruders during hey, the game. They this owed is, me. I walked through their show earlier. Yeah, this is live television. <laughs> it happens, and we're just having a good time and uh, trying to remain unflappable through it all. <coughs> well... The program set to start in just a few minutes. I think you bring up a great point about Anthony Rondon, FP. Everybody here wants him to stay. I think everybody thinks this would be a bigger loss than what the Nats experienced last year during the offseason. Hey, Bryce had a good season up in Philadelphia. Wish him the best. Hope he has a wonderful career up there. But to lose guys two years in a row that have that much talent and, of course, the amazing attitude that Anthony Rendon has, this would be a big loss to lose him. And we certainly hope he's here on opening day. When you sign a guy to a long contract, if you're in an ownership group, you look at his war. You know, how many wins is he worth? But when you look at the man Anthony Rendon is, the person he is, the father, the husband, the guy in the clubhouse the guy in the community it's everything you want in a long-term deal yeah. he's the same guy every day in the clubhouse and I think one of the most important things if you're gonna sign a guy to a long-term deal is he he makes other guys want to play with him so if I lock mm -hmm. up Anthony Rendon for seven years and I'm a player on another team every time somebody gets to third or Anthony Rendon's on the bases you see him laughing with players he's the coolest dude in all of baseball so if I'm a free agent and Anthony Rendon is a cornerstone here with Juan Soto and Victor Robles for years and Max Scherzer and Steven Strauss I want to come play with that dude. And that's why you sign a guy to a long-term deal. There's no worries about is he going to get in trouble off the field, anything. This guy is the poster child for a long-term deal, and I hope the Nats find a way to sign him. What we said earlier about Juan Soto and those kids down at the Dominican Youth Academy, that's Anthony Rendon and the kids in D.C. at the Nationals Youth Baseball Academy over there in Ward 7. Bo, he means the world to those kids. And when you have a city as diverse as Washington, D.C., and you have a kid like Anthony Rendon who didn't go to the All-Star game. He was a little banged up, but he didn't go home and just chill. He went over there and spent an entire day over there with those kids. Something like that is bigger than baseball. I think sometimes you have guys in your organization that is what I call irreplaceable parts, and I think Anthony Rendon is an irreplaceable part. Okay, yes, Bryce Harper left with free agency, and we wish Bryce well, but when you look at this roster, you saw Soto in the year he had. You knew Victor Robles was coming. You knew you had people within the organization that was going to be able to piece this team together and it was going to be a formidable team. When you look at Anthony Rendon, I don't think there's anybody in baseball that can replace this guy. So for that reason, I'm talking about the on-the-field production. Now when you go off the field in the community and what he means to the community, again, you're talking about an irreplaceable part. And for those two reasons, for me, it's a, it's a, it's a situation as an organization, you want to try to get this done. And for Anthony Rendon, to play his entire career in the Washington Nationals uniform. We cannot sign off without each of you giving your thoughts on Ryan Zimmerman. I, I think he's Mr. National. Again, of all the people that get to enjoy this, I think I'm the most happiest for Ron Zimmerman because he went through all of the all of the pains in the beginning, and now he gets to stand on the mountaintop. I just love the guy, man. I'm so happy for him. He's one of my favorites I've ever been around. I'm just so happy for him. Like nothing else. That's all I can say. Well, Ryan Zimmerman, I call him the Virginian. He's not like the old cowboy show. He's Virginia through and through. He's Mr. D.C. now. He's been called the face of our franchise for so many years. One game for all to stay alive. It was a special day. So things are getting started on the stage. We've got a couple more minutes. Or just the wild card game was an enormous accomplishment. We're going to go ahead and go to the stage. The program has started. By the way, the voice you'll hear is Jerome Haruska, the familiar voice of Nationals Baseball at Nationals Park. For Bo Porter, for F.P. Santangelo, good job, gentlemen. Bob Carpenter to the main stage. I never I'm thought Bob I'd Carpenter. say that. Nice work. Ho hope you enjoyed it. Now to the stage for the rest of today. <laughs> See you later. Ryan <laughs> sent up as a pinch hitter for Adam Eaton, a broken bat, blue pit, sends Taylor to third, and then they walk Anthony Rendon. When Juan Soto steps in and... Line drive into right field, you think the game is tied. Line drive, base hit to right. The right fielder.
Trent Grisham thought maybe he had to play at the plate instead of just getting in front of the ball to play it. He tried to scoop it while charging. The ball took a bad hop. Then you're waiting to see Anthony Rendon cross home plate, and he does. And they go on to win the wild card game. And the Washington Nationals are L.A. Bound. That's a moment that I think Nationals fans will remember for a very, very long time. And in my mind, is one of the Nationals' two or three best postseason moments in the history of the team. Two of the division series in L.A. The Nationals gave Steven Strasburg a 3-0 lead of the first two innings to work with. And everybody wondered how he'd come back from pitching three innings in the wild card game. He was sensational. Sean Doolittle pitched the seventh. But the Dodgers didn't think that Max Scherzer was next out of the bullpen. And he was lights out in the eighth inning. He struck out the side, 14 pitches, 11 strikes. And Daniel Hudson survived a, a tightrope walk in the bottom of the ninth inning. And eventually struck out Corey Seager with the bases loaded to end the game. And the Nationals even the series. Well, game four of the division series, the Nationals are down two games to one. And the Nationals got Rich Hill out of the game in the third. We're working against the Dodgers' bullpen. Uh, as the Nationals had a couple of men on base, the Dodgers went to Pedro Baez, known for throwing the high fastball. And here comes number 11, Ryan Zimmerman, who's been with this club part of every single season in Nationals history since he came up in September in 2005. What a moment it was. The right hander kicks the lever. Zim swings and drops one to deep center field. Way back goes Bellinger to the water track, to the wall. It is gone. Goodbye. You get to game five against the Dodgers at Dodger Stadium, and some people might consider that a win, but nobody inside the Nationals clubhouse was considering that a win. You're down in the eighth inning with arguably the opponent's best pitcher on the mound and the odds are against you but the comeback happened yet again rendon in the air to left taylor goes back to the wall and it's gone anthony rendon a leadoff homer in the eighth he swings and belts what a deep right center field a tremendous game tie home run by one soto well, as the 10th inning unfolded, the Nationals were in great shape to get a couple of men on base, setting up for Howie Kendrick, and, and Howie is a, a professional hitter, and you, you know, you, you feel good that at least Howie's going to put the ball in play. When the, when the ball left his back, uh, you know, as, I, as I'm calling the play in the booth, you know he's got the lead. So we got a fly ball, center field deep, Bellinger going back, Howie Kendrick with a grand slam, here in the 10th inning. That's the moment of his career, and for a broadcaster, honestly, those are the moments you might get one, two, or three of those in your career. You want to step up and, and make that moment a magic one, and hopefully that captured maybe what Nationals fans were feeling at the time, like, I don't believe this. The Nationals are, are going to win a postseason series on a grand slam at Dodger Stadium in extra innings, and I think that, that hopefully uh, captured the moment uh, that, that we could all believe that this team was going to do something really special. Nationally championship series started for the Nats in St. Louis. So did dominant pitching. Anibal Sanchez had the long layoff going into the postseason. Pitched in game three of the division series against the Dodgers. Comes back to start game one. And he was lights out, flirting with a no-hitter. In fact, held that no-hitter until the bottom of the eighth inning when Jose Martinez broke it up with a base hit. The first hit of the game for St. Louis. An extraordinary performance from Anibal Sanchez. Nationals go on to win the game by the score of two to nothing, and then you had Max Scherzer come right back in game two. Uh, you're thinking, well, there's no way it's going to happen again, and all of a sudden, uh, the, the shadows are going, and Max is, is mowing him down, and it, lo and behold, he takes a no-hitter into the seventh inning before giving up a hit. And the Nationals with a three-to-one win in game two with two of the best pitching performances you could ever ask for in postseason.
Patrick Corbin set the tone for game four to have 10 strikeouts through four innings as a postseason first where he struck out three Cardinals in a row in the top of the first inning and the crowd was in the celebratory mood knowing there was a chance to clinch the World Series spot and when he struck out the side it just gave a jolt of energy to the crowd which to me carried over to the bottom of the first inning. They wasted no time jumping on Cardinal starter Dakota Hudson as Trey Turner and Adam Eaton with uh, hits right away a single and a double put runners on second and third and Anthony Rendon delivered a sack fly and then you had Juan Soto swinging a line drive to the left field line it is a fair ball extra bases for Soto Eaton scores standing without a play Here's the pitch. swing and a pop up out goes Goldschmidt and Wong in the right field of Martinez coming in and the ball drops in from third is Soto to score and Dakota Hudson, the Cardinals, was out of the game, having given up five runs on only 15 pitches. That's how quickly the Nationals jumped on him. And eventually, with another hit by Trey Turner to score two off Adam Wainwright, they had seven runs on the board before the first inning was over. At that point, there's still 24 outs to go. Uh, the, the countdown was on. As far as the ninth inning goes, it felt really good about how Daniel Hudson was throwing the ball. He had gotten out of an eighth inning jam, and he gets the first two outs pretty quickly, and, and you can just you can just taste it. You want that last out to happen, and as soon as the ball was hit, I, I knew it was going to be the last out. I, I threw my arms up in the air, fist bumped with Charlie and Jack, our engineer, and the explosion of energy in Nationals Park was unbelievable. Fifteen years in the making to reach the World Series and bring the World Series here to the nation's capital for the first time since 1933. The Washington Nationals are National League champions! We now welcome to the stage to perform Take Me Out to the Ball Game, the Washington National Cathedral Choristers. <laughs> Turner to left. See you later. Game winner. Matt Adams to right field. This one's all over. And Parra, his first hit as a national is a grand slam. It's a shutout for Patrick Corbin. See you four in a row. Unbelievable. Four home runs in a row. We are seeing unbelievable things the ballpark tonight. And Trey Turner has another walk-off hit. Steven Strasburg puts it over the Atlanta bullpen for his fourth career home run. 
Tonight, I will celebrate with my boys because we are the world champions. fans, it's time to welcome to the stage your 2019 World Champions right now. Make some noise. Let's show them what DC sounds like. If you're not already, as the United States Armed Forces Color Guard presents our nation's colors. for the performance of the National Anthem from D.C., Washington. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light 
What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Armed Forces Color Guard and D.C. Washington. Washington, D.C., the best city in the world. It's time for National Space Ball. Let's play ball. It's a World Series in Washington, D.C. Let's go next. Washington, D.C., title town. Something special is going on in our nation's capital. We are proud our team who went to Houston and finished the fight, winning their first ever World Series and delivering another championship to our sports capital. Please welcome to the stage the mayor of the sports capital, the district of champions, and the 51st state, the honorable Muriel Bowser. games to 
get here, and they were down, each, each one of them. This team went away and won four games in the World Series. With grit, determination, and a whole lot of fun. So we know what this title means to D.C., a true baseball town. From the Senators to the Grays, and now the Nationals. By finishing this fight, you have brought a tremendous amount of joy to our town and inspired a new generation of players and Nationals fans. We are D.C. proud of you, and I think we should do it again next year. What do you think? Let's bring it back to back. Back to back. Congratulations. It's time to welcome your broadcast teams to the front of our stage. Your Nationals radio broadcast team on your flagship radio station, 106.7 The Fan. Please welcome Charlie Slows and Dave Chandler. <laughs> and, your, and your television broadcasting team on the Mid-Atlantic Sports Network, Masson, Bob Carpenter, and F.P. Santangelo! Every one of you in this crowd is a World Series champion Nationals baseball fan. Congratulations! You know, baseball is a game of memories, so I think I have some things I want you all to remember from this season. Not all of it's great. I want you to remember how it felt when our guys were 19 and 31, and they had to win 71 games to get to 90. Guess what they did? They won 74 to get to 93. Remember when Davey said to go 1-0 every day, did we believe that? Well, we do now. Remember the first time you did the baby shark when Gerardo came out of the dugout and got a key base hit? Remember watching Max with a broken nose and a black eye go out and pitch a Max Scherzer ball game? When you chanted MVP when Anthony came to the plate. <laughs> Remember how we all went crazy the night Kurt Suzuki hit a homer and we walked off the Mets with seven in the ninth. <laughs> I've got a few other things I don't want you to forget. Don't ever forget how excited you got when Juan Soto got the base hit to beat Milwaukee in the wild card game. Don't ever forget how you jumped off your couch when Howie hit the grand slam at Dodger Stadium. Don't ever forget how you felt at the ballpark or at home when the boys danced on the infield sweeping the Cardinals and winning the National League pennant. Don't forget how you cheered when our guy from Virginia hit the first Nationals World Series homer, Ryan Zimmerman. Don't forget how you felt when they danced one final time on the infield in Houston on Wednesday night to win the World Series. There are some who say D.C. cannot be united. The Nationals have united D.C. We are here today because we love each other as Nationals fans. We're united in our love for this great game of baseball. And we are united as we celebrate our Washington Nationals World Series champions. And oh, one more thing. See 
you later. Thank you. And now I get to introduce a man who has had a very long fight of his own. He has stayed in the fight and he has finished the fight. The happiest owner in Major League Baseball, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Lerner. since 1924 we brought the World Series championship back to our nation's capital on behalf of my mother Annette and our and the entire Lerner Cohen and Tannenbaum family we're all thrilled that my 94 year old 94 year old father Ted Lerner had his dream come true to bring a world championship to his hometown This unbelievable group of coaches and players standing behind me made that dream come true. The memories that this group of men gave us will last a lifetime. Nets fans, we are so grateful for all of your support over the years. I'm thrilled so many of you came out today. It's incredible, wall-to-wall -wall people. And what a celebration it has been. You filled up Nationals Park for years, even showing up at the park in the last couple weeks for viewing parties, and the other night having 36,000 people in the rain. <laughs> the, the, the view on TV, uh, on, the, on the Twitter, seeing you guys at Nationals Park when we were down in Houston was unbelievable. We definitely would never make this moment without you. Yay! So much credit goes to President of Baseball Operations and our General Manager, Mike Rizzo. <laughs> Mike was one of our family's first two hires when we purchased the team in 2006. Thank you, Mike, and your terrific Baseball Operations Department for putting such a great team together. I personally know the hard work that goes on year-round to put a quality team on the field. Davey Martinez, what a job you did this season. Leading this amazing group of players, coaches, and staff, you all fought your hearts out to get here, and you played the game the right way. Thank you for your dedication and passion and for never giving up. Want to know every day. Right, David? Your passion was contagious. There were moments where I didn't know if you were going to call for a reliever or for a defibrillator. <laughs> to the players, this championship was truly a full team effort. There were certainly some personal performances that will go down in World Series history. Strauss and Howie are postseason MVPs. Your talent is truly awe-inspiring. This group behind me has grit, a dedication, and a love of the game, and certainly lots of personality. It was a joy to watch you play and celebrate and support one another, the true definition of team. To our Washington National staff, many of whom are here today, I know how much hard work you put into getting to this moment. Thank you for all you do, work most people never see, but that makes all the difference for our organization. We all stayed in the fight, and so here we are today celebrating finishing the fight and a World Series championship. 
On behalf of my entire family, thank you. And before I leave, I only have one other thing to say. Baby Shark. Thank you for those remarks, and uh, before we continue, I would like to welcome up the rest of the broadcast team. Please welcome to the stage Alex Chappell, Bo Porter, and Dan Colco. And now next at the podium, please welcome Dave Jagler. When Howie Kendrick hit that home run against the Dodgers in Game 5, the Grand Slam, we heard the call. I said, do you believe it? And this team almost defies belief what it accomplished. From 19 and 31, when they had about a 0.1% chance to make the playoffs, to winning eight road games in a row in the postseason, five elimination games when they trailed in all of them, and to win four World Series road games. This is truly an historic achievement. No other team in baseball has done what this group did in the history of the sport. But that's just, that's just numbers and stats. To me, this team is about going 1-0. This team is about staying in the fight. This team's about doing this when they get ahead. This team's about Para and Sanchez with the Elton John sunglasses. It's about dugout dance parties. It's about Howie and Eaton barreling down the highway. It's about Doolittle's lightsaber. It's about Strasburg after a postseason gem getting a bear hug and a slow dance from Para, Sanchez, and Max on the outside. It's about the Nets crowds that make it so loud you can't even think. So much louder than any other place we played in the postseason. It's about what you guys did when Joe Ross came out for Game 5. It's, a, it's an ovation that will give, give me goosebumps 10 years from now when I think about it, how great you were. Thank you to the Nats fans. You helped these guys finish the fight. The day we really knew that this was possible to me was September 3rd, when it was Mets 10, Nationals 4 in the bottom of the ninth inning. And Charlie made the call on the radio after Kurt Suzuki hit the home run to win it. If you left Nationals Park early when the Nationals were down by six, you blew it. But I'm gonna ask you, if you gave up when the Nationals were down 3-1 in the eighth inning of the wild card game, if you gave up when the Nationals were down 3-1 in game five against the Dodgers, if you gave up when the Nationals were down three games to do the Astros, and if you gave up when the Nationals were down two to nothing in the seventh inning, if you didn't believe this team could go all the way to the World Series, and if you didn't enjoy every single second of this ride, you blew it! Loved the energy in the ballpark. You know, we love the fans, and they support us since we've gotten here. They were on fire, and it started early. These, the, the, the people who are there, night in and night out, they're as passionate and, and rabid of uh, baseball fans as anybody around. You know, this, this narrative that the Nats fans don't care, it's not a baseball town, is garbage. took over the Nationals. They were the 30th best team in the major leagues. They're now number one. Please welcome the president of baseball operations and your general manager, Mike Rizzo.
the music. All right. Washington, D.C., we're the world champions. How about that? It's got a good ring to it. Hey, I want to I thank, first of all, the greatest fan base in all sports, the Washington, D.C. fan base. Thank you. that I always thank because they are the unsung heroes of any championship caliber organization. Our scouting and the player development staff are sitting right there in front of us. Our front office staff, which is second to none. Guys who are missing birthdays and anniversaries and kids' Little League games to go watch players to find the next Anthony Rendon and the next Patrick Corbin and Steven Strasburg. So thank you, guys. You made it. Second of all, I'd like to thank our, our ownership group because without the without the owners being so supportive and so forthright and and so uh, communicative with myself, this thing doesn't happen. So thank you, ownership group. I'd like to thank my family who is here today. My son. There they are, the loudest people in the group, right there. I'd like to thank I'd like to thank uh, all the fans that uh, that make my life uh, easy on a on a day to day basis. I'd like to thank our major league staff. This is a group that puts work in. They're they're at the game. They're at the ballpark every day about noon for a seven o'clock game. The work that they put in is is you can't even realize the amount of effort and work that they put in to prepare themselves for the game. So thank you guys. The skipper, David Martinez. They were shoveling dirt on him in May. Now he's the world champ. Congrats, David. And of course, we talk about all the player development and the scouting and the analytics and the, and the business and the, the ticket sales and the suite sales. None of this happens. None of it happens without the players, man. What a group. What a group of players we have right here. They counted us out. They knocked us down. We had injuries early. We, had, we didn't perform like we wanted to. But not one person pointed a finger. No anonymous quotes. No, no uh, clubhouse lawyers. No backbiting loyalty. And that's why we're here today. So I'm going to end it right here because I want to get this thing started for the next couple of days with, uh, with the guys. So I've got just one thing to say. <clears throat> the, the Washington Nationals fan base, <clears throat> again, you are the District of Champions, and I couldn't be more humbled to be the president of baseball operations and general manager for this franchise. Thank you. Are we having fun yet? Well, the thought occurred to me several years ago when these fans down below our broadcast booth in the gallery level, and it started with a few, and then it was more and more and more, and it got to be so big that the Nationals painted the letters on the wall in the gallery level, N-A-T-S, Nats, Nats, Nats. Wait, not yet. Well, the thought occurred to me, come here, Dave. We're on the air when you do that. So we have never, ever done it with anyone. So we thought today we could do an NATS Nats, Nats, Nats with about a million of our best friends. So let's do it three times in the count of three and then give me the best woo you've ever done. Ready? One, two, three. N-A-T-S, Nats, Nats, Nats. Again, N-A-T-S, Nats, 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 woo! N-A-T-S, Nats, 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 woo! The one thing I have to 
say after talking with the Lerner family and Mike, we have definitely have something in common, and that's the desire and passion to bring a world championship here to Washington, and uh, we're going to get it done. I believe in these guys, and they believe in each other. But, uh, the biggest thing for us is never quit. I can say this. Often bumpy roads leads to beautiful places, and this is a beautiful place. Martinez about 21 years ago when he was a starting right fielder for the expansion Tampa Bay Devil Rays and he was a great teammate that's what you knew about him he also had the first hit in their franchise history in the record books it's a vicious smoking line drive into right field on the radio it was a ground ball up the first baseline that hit the bag and bounced past the first baseman into right field but who cares right Davey played for some great managers in his time over his 16-year career. A couple that were real fiery, like Lou Pinella and like Bobby Cox, who was kicked out of a record 161 games in his big league career. I know they were watching Game 6 of the World Series the other night in the middle of the seventh inning, and they said, boy, Davey. <laughs> Well, you've, you've heard the numbers, 19 and 31, 19 and 31. We've all, haven't we all had a place in our life where we felt like we were 19 and 31? Haven't we all? But maybe we didn't have that same inspiration that these guys had when someone said, don't worry, we're going to be okay. We're going to get all our guys back and we're gonna play like we're capable of playing. So don't think about tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that, think about today. Win today. Let's go 1-0 today. And if we could do that, we'll go 1-0 tomorrow. And then 1-0 the next day. And the next day. And the next day. And if we have enough of those, he said, we'll get to where we wanna be. Well, look where we are. Here he is. The inspiration for the greatest turnaround, maybe not only in baseball history, but in team sports history, the manager of the world champion, Washington Nationals, Davey Martinez. Before I get started, I can't do this by myself. I mean, we got here because of the group of guys that we had in that clubhouse all year long. The resilience, the relentless, the team that never gave up, that fought. So while I talk right here, I want my boys up here too. Everybody's talking about all this stuff. We love you guys. We love you guys. I was getting, I was, I was sitting game six, before game six, and I was getting all these tweets and all these things about, and I don't tweet. But these are these are these guys telling me and, and uh, media telling me about how the stadium is getting full and we're in Houston and we're down, but the, the people are still coming out. You know what that means to us when we're trying to play 
and stay in the fight. <laughs> that, that was huge. <laughs> and then we start the game, game six, knowing that we're down. As you all know, things got a little heated up. tell me to stay in a fight. I'm going to fight. <laughs> I'm going to stick up for these boys because they stuck up for me all year long. So we get, we get going. I got players telling me, watch my heart. I got fans screaming at me, your heart, Davey, your heart, Davey. I'm going to tell you something. All this right here has cured this heart. <laughs> I believe since day one that this, this thing will turn around. That we had the group of guys that had the strength and the courage to make this thing turn around. I never quit. I stayed positive. The boys stayed positive. The only thing I've asked them was don't point any fingers. I created this circle of trust and I trusted these guys. I trusted the veteran guys. I trusted our young guys, and through it all, we were resilient. Yeah. And we came to this place, bumpy roads, one beautiful place. So with that being said, I want to thank the guys behind me and behind them for giving me this opportunity to be up here today. I want to thank the families that are sitting to the right, to the left. I want to thank the extended family for all you've given us. This world championship is not only for us, it's for the city of Washington, D.C. You guys deserve this as much as we do. Thank you. I think, I think Andy, a Anthony Rendon wants to say something right now. baseball <laughs> but uh you guys have just been uh, nothing short of amazing out here for you guys to show up in the playoffs like y'all did uh to bring the energy like y'all had and the noise hey we fed off of it even though we didn't win hey it's all right we felt it and that's gonna go a long way don't worry and uh i just appreciate y'all that we finished up in my hometown because i don't have to hear about it if we lost when i went back home to houston thank y'all hey i i i you know they're gonna get mad at me because i wasn't supposed to do this i wasn't supposed to bring these guys up here but hey you guys you want to hear from Howie Kendrick or what? Yeah. yeah. Howie Kendrick. Howie. 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 Oh, yeah. This is it, right? Hey, get that one. Get that one. Right here. Come on. This is hey, the button on the top. Right there. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Hey, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, one more. Oh. Selfie, selfie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, DC, you know, at a time when I came here, I was thinking about retiring in my career. And honestly, I was at a rough spot in the game. You know, being with, the, with another organization kind of got me down on the game a little bit. Coming here, you know, my first year was with Dusty. And I had a great time. This group of guys back here, not all of them, but most of them were here. And they taught me, they taught me to love the game again. The city taught me to love baseball again. 
Mike Rizzo, after my first year here, he goes, hey, I'm going to bring you back here. And, you know, he gave me a two-year deal. I ruptured my Achilles in the first year of that deal. And I was miserable sitting at home watching us lose ball games, watching the guys not having success. And, you know, that whole process brought me back to these guys, this group of guys here. And, you know, I fought through that whole thing. And I told them, I'll be ready for spring training. And spring training came around. I was ready, got hurt again, delayed my, <laughs> delayed my start in my season. But, you know, all I can think about is getting back to the locker room to be with these guys. And, you know, we added some pieces along the way. And the one thing I've learned from them is that we're never out of the fight. We keep fighting, and we fight and fight and fight. And when you kick us down, we're going to get back up. And that's what we did all year. Everybody gave up on us early. We kept fighting. We believed in each other. We got a lot of bulldogs in this locker room. We got a lot of puppies in this locker room, too. <laughs> but they're all welcome, though. And you know what? Bumpy roads do lead to beautiful places, and this trophy right here is proof of that. So this is for you, D.C. Okay. We heard from an old guy, from a middle-aged guy. Now, hey, I'm going to bring up one of our puppies. Soto, where you at, Soto? This is, this is all for you guys. Uh, this group of guys has been amazing. All these veteran guys, all these new guys, the GM, all the owners, it's been amazing. <laughs> all the viejos. <laughs> the viejos made it too. The viejos made it too. But we can make it without you guys. You guys have been amazing. You guys have been right there for us. Shit in the left field, center field, right field, all the crowd. Amazing. I love you guys. Hey, once again, thank you, Washington, D.C. Thank you, Nats fans. Hey, the mayor said, let's go back to back. Right? She said that. I get it. Hey, I'm all in. But let me enjoy this one first. <laughs> hey, I don't, I don't know if my heart could take any more of this right now. So I need to just take a step back and enjoy this. Remember, 1-0. Oh. 1-0 oh is not over. 1-0 oh means waking up tomorrow and winning your day. Win your day. Thank you. Well, before you guys leave the stage, uh, we would like to bring up to the stage for his remarks the founding principal owner of your Washington Nationals, Mr. Ted Lerner. Nationals. We thank you for everything you've done and the Washington national team and the fans and we hope for better even a repetition someday. They they say good things come to those who wait. 95 years is a pretty long wait. But I'll tell you, this is worth the wait. This is for the city that's always believed. The players that always fought and the fans who were with us all every step of the way. For a long time, a lot of us believed in the words of former baseball commissioner Barty Ametti, who said, baseball is designed to break your heart. 
But this team believed the words of Bob Feller, who said, every day is a new opportunity. That's the way life is, and that's the way baseball is. That's the way this team played every game, every pitch, every swing was a new opportunity to do something special. And that's what everyone involved with this club did. Finally, I want to say a special word to the veterans on this team. From now on, you can call me Grandpa Shark. It's not often people look at Washington, D.C. and say, those guys really love each other. <laughs> but this team, they love each other. And I love all of them. Thank you. Started. Ryan, get up here. They champ for you. With the walker. <laughs> wow. What a special group of guys, man. Uh, these guys, we fought all year long. We stayed together. Um, we had such a cast of characters. You know, much has been made about the viejos and the young guys, and uh, you know, we came from uh, we came from a dark place in June. We uh, we really were one and zero. We played playoff games from June first on, and I think that really helped us. Um, you know, there's not a team that I would have wanted to do this with more more than these guys. Like, like Mr. Lerner said, it was worth the wait. Um, the fans, we grew up together. I came here when I was 20 years old, right out of college. Um, you guys, you guys hadn't had baseball in a long time. You were learning how to be fans again. I got guys that come up to me now that are 30 years old and said I've been their favorite player since they were a little kid. <laughs> Which is disturbing. <laughs> Basically like Juan. <laughs> but uh, what a group of guys. We're 2019 World Series champs, and nobody can ever take that away from us. Thank you to the city of D.C. You guys have been great. You guys are behind us all the time. Anytime we go out to dinner, anytime we're walking on the streets, you guys have always been so supportive and so nice to us. I truly believe this is the greatest city to play sports in the world. Thank you. Are you kidding me? All right, 
From 1931 to World Series champs, how great is this, you guys? But, but I want to make a point. Everybody picked against these guys, right? They were the underdogs. They were 18 and 31. Nobody thought they were going to make it to the playoffs at all. And then when they got to the playoffs, nobody picked them to beat the Brewers. Nobody picked them to beat the Dodgers. Nobody picked them to beat the Cardinals, and absolutely no one picked them to beat the Houston Astros. Yet here they are. So in my mind, if on any given day these guys have the urge, they have the right to wear the ring on their middle finger if they'd like. <laughs> so I'm going to bring my partner up here again, and we're going to have some fun. We're going to involve you guys in it, and we're going to eliminate all the teams these guys beat in the playoffs together with Bob Carpenter's home run call, the best home run call in baseball. So it all started with the last homestand, right? They went 5-0 and against the Philadelphia Phillies. They eliminated the Philadelphia Phillies from the playoffs. So I'm going to tee you guys up and you're going to say it real loud. To the Philadelphia Phillies, see you later. Outstanding. We can do better than that, though. So that's the Milwaukee Brewers come in for the wild card. The Nats have never had a break in the postseason ever. Juan Soto hits a ball that's supposed to go this way, it goes that way. Everybody scores. The Nats win the wild card. They beat the Brewers. So to the Milwaukee Brewers, see you later. Outstanding. All right, next, the Dodgers. They're not going to beat the Dodgers. There was an article in the L.A. Times that said, I mean, they might as well not even played the game. 106-win team. What are they even doing there? So they beat the L.A. Dodgers. We know about the series, Howie's Grand Slam, everything. Everybody dealing, Max Scherzer. So to the Los Angeles Dodgers, see you later. All right, the Cardinals came to town. A lot of demons were buried in that one, right? They swept the St. Louis Cardinals. That was good, right? That felt good. Not just beating them, but sweeping them. To Pete Cosma and all those guys, that's gone. So to the St. Louis Cardinals, see you later. All right, now the last one, the World Series, the Houston Astros. I don't even know why these guys showed up to the World Series. The odds were against them. They had no chance. 107-win team. These guys are amazing. Then something happened along the way. And a special series, you guys all know what happened. Howie with another tremendously huge jack. Juan Soto on the main stage. Anthony Rendon, Max Scherzer pitching with uh, guts alone. So how about to the Houston Astros, everyone? See you later. All right, one more. This is the last one. No more thinking that the worst is going to happen. No more expecting that the worst is ha going to happen. We put all the ghosts and the demons to bed. So to the ghosts of October past, see you later. And now we dance forever. And a guy that danced maybe more than anybody has all season long, and I know he danced more than he ever has in his life, the World Series MVP, Steven Strasburg. sick in October so decided to get sick now but um, <laughs> you know this was uh, this was quite a ride it's something you dream about as a kid I think we all did that but um, you know it's something really really special because we were able to do it together and you know it takes it took all 25 of us and I think that's you know you can see that every single every single day you know we're pulling for each other um, just such a special ride um, you know, the 
MVP trophy. It could have easily gone to, to any other guy here. And, um, you know, I, I know I'm going to look back someday when I'm old and gray and, um, you know, watch all the, all the games. But right now, you know, just going to soak in the moment, enjoy it with the rest of these fellows here. Thank you, guys. Number two, Adam Eaton. I wasn't expecting this. Was uh, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do something that we've never shared with anybody else besides the bus or the plane. We like to do something that uh, it's called going live. Okay, so we're gonna go live. Yeah, a little cheer. That's good. Um, it's basically where we allow our players and officials to have an opinion. But I don't think we have service enough to go live right now. But all I can say is that uh, I'm blessed to be here. These guys behind me. I can't say enough about them. It's uh, it's been a wild ride. I, I can never imagine being here with such names as Strasburg, Scherzer, Howie, Soto. Um, the list goes on. Harapara. I mean, it's it's uh, it's amazing to me that uh, and like I said, I'm standing here with these guys. Oh, Zim, Zim. Yeah, the face of the organization. Sorry, Zim. Yeah, hit a couple home runs. That's my bad. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on. And we're live right now. We're live. Just into the hotline, Anibal Sanchez. Big, big deal here. Just into the hotline as well, Kevin Long. No big deal. Small guy, but I guess he can teach us to hit. What? Oh, yeah, come on up to the hotline. Kevin Long, come on up. Yeah, this guy, come on up. This is special. This is special because we're both the same size. Not Doesn't happen very often. Teach us a little. Well, well, what, what are we going to talk about? This is the hotline, so you can this say anything awesome. you want to say. Love you, DC. Yeah, I love it. Huh? I love it. Huh? Absolutely. Love these guys. Love these guys. Unbelievable. You're what you're, in the big leagues this year? You were a 265 hitter with 12 home runs. I think that was the average for the season. Is that the average of everybody? So I get yeah, that's I get pretty home. good. That's yeah, bad. you should get more money. Go, the owners are right there. Go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and talk to them. All right. So hey, next up, go ahead and go back. Hey, anybody else up here? We're live. Yeah, hey, Doolittle, come on up here. Thank you. Yeah, Doolittle. Hey, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Come on, I love hearing, I think it's booze, but really it's dues, baby. Hey, do you guys remember when we brought camels to spring training? And everybody laughed at us? Who's laughing now? Also, we won the World Series on a Wednesday. Oh, dude. Okay, next up to the hotline. Oh, Trey Turner, ladies and gentlemen, wearing the big old belt here. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to touch you there, but it's it's a great looking belt you got. Uh, so this is the hotline, correct? You can say whatever you want. It's great. Can we bring back Anthony Rendon? You can say whatever you want. It's great. But I'll second that notion. Second. All in favor? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I think I got one other person to bring up before I'm impeached. Um, Max Scherzer, come on up here, please. Again, you can say whatever you want. This is the hotline. What do you want me to talk about? The, I know the list is long. Oh my gosh, on you? No, 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 don't. Now, I have nothing to do with this. It's about the team, all right? I it's know it was about the team. About all these guys back here grinding their hearts out for freaking four straight months, doing everything in their power, whether they're hurt, whether on the ground, or fighting through everything. That was stay in the fight. And when we started hitting, we got power, we started dancing. 
We start getting on there, we start hitting solo shots, whether that was important or not. <laughs> we started partying and we started having fun. And you saw a group of guys come together like you've never seen before. Never in this town have you ever seen a team compete with so much heart and so much fight all the way to the wild card game and then all the way through October. That's why you have seen a World Series champion because of the heart and fight that this team has. We're signing off. The hotline's off. Thank you, DC. Let's hear it one more time for your 2019 World Series champion, Washington Nationals! today's parade and rally and thank you for your incredible support throughout the entire 2019 season and for the last 15 years it was your fight too we stayed in the fight we finished the fight and we couldn't have done it without you one more time your world series champion washington
fitting that this 2019 season and ultimate championship parade and celebration would end with the baby shark and the shark sure enough right smack in the middle of that beautiful World Series trophy. Welcome back inside our Masson Studios. I'm Alex Parker. Thank you so much for spending this amazing afternoon with us right here on Masson so we could celebrate this Nats run, title, World Series championship, celebration parade, the whole thing together as we have all season. It's been a pleasure. I'm struck by the raw emotion that was out there today. Just unreal. For Bob Carpenter, F.P. Santangelo, Bo Porter, Dan Coco, Alex Chappell, and our amazing Mass and Nats crew, thank you for being a part of this amazing season and spending so much of it with us. Nats fans, enjoy it. You will always be 2019 world champions. We will see you in spring training when the Nats begin their quest to repeat. Thanks again. We'll see you soon. And let's go Nats. For Hyundai and its dealers, the health and safety of our local communities have always come first. And right now, we're all safer at home. But should you need a vehicle, we have options to shop online. And a participating dealer will deliver it right to you. And to ease the financial strain, you'll make no payments for four months. Together, we can create a safer, better car buying experience.